It's the big homie. The one and only. Facts Kellerman. Steven A. Pim. Your favorite YouTuber's favorite YouTuber. Attila the Hun. The warrior king of this YouTube thing. Yiddy. And we back kicking game. And I feel like the game needs me. When I look around in YouTube land, I see a lot of guys who talk about women and they clearly don't get women. You look at all their videos, there's not one woman in the videos. I'm not talking about their podcast, I'm talking about their real life, you dig? So I feel like I gotta come here and give you some deep knowledge. I'm packed with game today, I'm gonna try to stay on topic. The topic is women, you dig? By the way, I appreciate those who show love as I always seek to do the same. I want to acknowledge OH. I want to acknowledge Ricardo, writes, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. Shout out to Corey. He writes, what are your thoughts on semen retention as it relates to building sexual tension? Do women like a man who makes them wait and have to earn it? Well, that's a good question. Uh, let's break that apart because there are many ways to make a woman wait, so to speak. In fact, in my notes today, I have a note for you that says you have to make a woman go through tryouts. The sad thing is that most of you are going through tryouts. You're letting a female put you through tryouts. And the great irony is that, nah, that's not how that should work. Why? Because you're the leader. The leader should be setting the course. The woman's putting you through tryouts. She's setting the course. So first and foremost, you always want to make sure that a woman is worthy of dealing with you. And that shows that you have value in yourself. And in as much as that's the case, yes, you'll have her weight at some level. Further, if you got a stable, then there's no rush to lay with the woman. You see, in fact, it's wiser to find out who she is before you lay with her. And in my case, I find that often when I discover who the female really is, I don't want to lay with her. I turn down more vagina than you could imagine. In fact, I turned down more of it than your favorite dating coach has even offered. That being the case, your semen retention will not be semen retention. It'll just be you not choosing to lay with that woman because she might not be qualified, or it's you putting her through tryouts, or it's you waging a particular tactic upon her or psychological warfare upon her. But one thing I can assure you is walk, don't run in general when dealing with females. They definitely are filled with passion when they find that you're disinterested. Indifference fills a woman with passion. With regards to semen retention, I think it can make sense uh, sometimes. But generally speaking, it is natural to release ever so often in, in a natural way, which is into a woman, preferably an attractive one, right? But definitely a one with morals. By PayPal, the law's originals. And shout out to those who send in via PayPal and Cash App because they're not benefiting the Google Corporation, which censors myself and many other speakers of truth. The Law Originals writes, quote, some of us confuse manhood with being violent, aggressive, mean, stern, and not getting emotional. If none of these are true, are a true measure of a man, what is? Particularly, I thought being stern and emotionally rational was part of it. You're right. People have not the foggiest idea of manhood, and many males are feminine in their behavior and in their thinking. So number one, being violent is a latent power that every man has or should have, and it's of great value, but you have to know when to leverage it. Being thoughtlessly violent is foolish and immature, and in fact, in many cases, that can be thought of as being feminine or childish. Being mean is just a low quality. Being stern, if we're making that akin to serious, there are times when one should be serious and a man should be very keen on when to be serious. Not getting emotional, there are times that emotion is, calls, uh, is called for. And it is the wise man who is aware of when it is appropriate. See, one of the chief traits of the man is to be serious, to be constantly thinking, and to select the emotion at the appropriate time. And this takes training, conditioning, and discipline. And another key to being a real man is discipline. Thank you for that question via PayPal, wherein we're able to block the censorship 
from the Google Corporation and stop them from taking 30% of the money you send in via uh, Super Chat. CJ Bailey writes, peace to the Saints tuning in while getting this workout. Hope all is well. You know what? All is well. And the funny thing is not only is all well for me, I know all is well for all of you. And I want to remind you of that because so often we let small things become big things. And you have to take control of your mind, especially as a leader. And that is what a man is. Even if you're a janitor in your work, you're a leader in your home. You're a leader of a woman. You're a leader of your family. And you must know that all is well. So you should think goodness and speak goodness. And people will be attracted to you and want to figure out what's driving you. Tommy writes, Peace of the Saints, I've realized women only call me cute and rarely sexy or fine. Is it a bad thing or am I just overthinking it? You may be overthinking it. At the end of the day, the words of the female are worth very little for they have many words. They're very uh, loquacious and often thoughtless. And, you know, they find they derive happiness from conversation itself, not from finding an outcome from a conversation, but from actually just having the conversation. So I wouldn't take women's words very seriously. And I also would not position myself as a woman in the way I communicate, which is to say I wouldn't be overly talkative and constantly babbling about things that have no consequence. So yeah, I wouldn't think twice about it. I'd carry on. Shout out to Jamal. It's very consistent, comes in with tuition. Jorge writes, checking in with the mayor of Las Vegas, you dig? Peace to those in St. City. History Packet writes, peace to the saints. Lil Jimmy, good to see you, Lil Jimmy. Lil Jimmy writes, would you find it more likely that you have to take an older woman on a date before? Hell nah. If it's an older woman, the truth is that most of them are desperate. And in fact, a lot of young men are victim of older women. You see, they've passed their prime and men their age are married or dealing with younger women. And so an older woman finds a younger man because he's sex driven. And he's like, you know, you're, you got a little bit of wrinkle on you. You're not the most attractive, but I'll deal with you. And at the end of the day, the older woman, you don't plan to stay with her. You're just there to play with her. So you might as well go ahead and slay uh, and get on about your day. So, no, it's not necessary to take them out, especially if they're significantly older than you. Hey, they've been taken out a lot. It's not necessary. He writes, um, now nah, older women will come straight for the hookup as well. And here's the thing. Older women have seen everything. You know, you're not about to show them anything new, which is one of the reasons it's not so fun to deal with them in a capacity beyond sex, because nothing is new to them. Nothing is exciting and fun. You know, they're often jaded and that's part of why they're single. I highly recommend against dealing with older women, but I understand how you might fall into that trap. I mean, you might want you a little piece of pie and it get like that. I get that. Stefan writes, tuition, peace to the saints, hashtag King Chicago. See you in two weeks. I look forward to it as the conference is nearing. Oh, we got so much game here. Here's some uh, tough lessons for women on dating and relationships. Uh, and men can benefit from knowing this. So I will share this with you. Uh, this person writes, personally, I like older women. <laughs> then enjoy, enjoy that three sins Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Hey, if who you are is one who really likes older women, bruh, uh, enjoy. There's a lot of them out there. Number one, females have high requirements of males. This is the comedy of the world, which is that the woman could be you know, snag a tooth, working at Walmart, single mom, yet she has high requirements of the male. She likes the sixes, six figure income, six foot or above, six pack. And so for the income, the reputation and the physicality of the male, the woman has high requirements. And for this very reason, women are often cheated on because the men who fit into this small category are not numerous. And because there's a minority of these men, they get to do what they want 
and women being largely delusional characters, hyper-focused on their interests or inclinations or whims, they get taken away by this thing that they want, the tall, wealthy James Bond figure, and they take a blind eye to all the other things that he does that they don't like, namely the uh, infidelity. And that's why we get to get away with a lot, you did. So that's the reality that, oh, I shouldn't say reality. That's the metaverse that females live in. And the funny thing about it is when they get to attach themselves, not monopolize, but attach themselves to one of these sought after males, they deal with anything that he gives them to deal with and they delude themselves into thinking that he's telling them the truth. And the reason he doesn't need to tell them the truth is because he doesn't plan on staying with them in the long term. So he's really just utilizing them for his purposes. But it's OK, because when you really think about it, both parties are engaged in the userous relationship. The woman might be there using him for clout, status or money. He's there using her for her vagina or, you know, for entertainment in the evening, whatever the case may be. And in as much as that's the case, the relationship will be short lived. But here's the thing. The man is going to benefit the most because he wasn't really invested in it in the first place. Conversely, the woman, having no self-awareness, didn't look in the mirror and realize that she's slightly overweight. She's aging. She has all of these uh, negatives on her record. She, for some reason, was trying to fall in love and stay with him for all time to come. And that is the nature of the female, that their emotions carry them away when they are in love or interested or smitten with a man. That is also the nature of a boy or an immature male that he experiences the same thing. A mature male is never impressed by the appearance of a woman so much that it would cause him to misunderstand who she is or how she should factor into his life. By Cash App, shout out to CJ Bailey, comes in with tuition. Shout out to Orion Stoner. He writes, at work right now, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. Enjoy work and draw the most profit that you can today. Yoel writes, sent uh, Cash App for a question in the YouTube comments. So I'm going to go ahead and check for that. And everyone, if you see Yoel's comment, please go ahead and post it back up for us. Jamal writes, I've realized that my mindset holds me back with women and in life. Oh, mindset is the whole ballgame. I try every day to change the mindset, but often do fail. What are some ways to limit my failure? Number one, what you're dealing with is pattern. You have a pattern that's running and it's a bad pattern. You have to ask yourself, well, how do I break the pattern? So that starts with different behaviors, which you should write down and then start to engage. You should write them down and schedule them. For example, one thing that I know about myself is that I'm an introvert. Being one who runs businesses and has assistants and live in assistants and different uh, people I have to be around, I get exhausted. When I'm around people too much, I get worn down very quickly. And it causes me to be unproductive and lose my genius and my drive for life. So knowing that that's the case, I schedule in time to do the things that I know rebound me. Further, I even have a list of things that I do if I start to feel depressed or down. First thing I do is start doing ab crunches. I don't care where I am. I could be in my office. I'm going to get down in a suit and start doing ab crunches. So I have a, a list of things that I do to break a certain pattern. So the number one thing you're dealing with is a bad pattern. You have to find a way to break the bad pattern. And the funny thing is that you know the answer. Most of us do. It's applying the answer that is the challenge. Ricky writes, Peace of the Saints, the number one thing men need in their, in their life is hobbies and activities for personal development, like going to seminars, learning the piano, salsa, paragliding, aerobatics, scuba diving, and travel. I agree. Hobbies can be very important. And I really like when your hobbies are aligned with your big goals, be them financial relationship goals or otherwise. ND writes, Peace of the Saints, when deciding between dating two women, should you pick the one who is more aligned with your lifestyle or the one you have a stronger connection with? Thanks for the consistency, Saint. Nick Davis. Well, Nick, the question is, uh, how can a woman be more aligned with your lifestyle and you not have the stronger connection with her? I need some elaboration here because 
I enjoy my lifestyle. So when a woman is aligned with my lifestyle, that's the best relationship because whatever move I want to make, she can move with me. Now, when you say stronger connection, does that mean attraction or does that mean personality? Remember, over time in a relationship, a beautiful woman will just be all right if you're not deeply connected to her on a emotional, spiritual, and most importantly, moral level. I know. I mean, I've slayed gorgeous women. And then, you know, after you slay them and then they start talking, you're like, oh, God, you're still alive, huh? Jeez. The beauty has no impact, right? They just become regular. And that's why I've stopped being in the practice of building relationships with gorgeous women. I only build relationships with people and women who are beautiful on the inside. The ones that are just externally beautiful, I might, I might let them get a little bit of the candy muscle, you hear me? But then I got to kick them to the curb, set them out like the trash on a Thursday. You did. That's garbage day. Carrying on. Juan writes, Peace of the Saints, Mark Put. I'm currently in university. How would you go about getting females to start paying you? while exercising de-control. Reminds me of your story about a female who got your name tatted all without smashing. Indeed, that was a special story. Now, the funny thing about that one is that was certainly a situation in which I denied the physical contact for a long time. And with women, they base so much of their reality on their physicality, their appearance, who's attracted to them, who's complimenting them. So once you fail to be ensnared by their sexual lures, then they're going to be seriously perplexed. And in their confusion, they're going to doubt themselves. And they're also going to aggrandize you in their mind because they're like, wow, I have no effect on this guy. And then their drive is to get your affection. And in doing that, they're empowering you. And if you want them to pay you, you have to let them know what it is. You see a closed mouth doesn't get fed. And further, if you don't establish the standard, they can't abide by the standard. Peace of the saints. Tommy writes, I remember you saying to avoid women who are over 25 and single. Oh, indeed. I'm saying avoid them in terms of sticking with them. You know, there could be one or two who might be good women, but if they're notably attractive and they're 25 and older and single, oh, it's all bad. I can assure you of that. He writes, got one on my roster. Should I just smash and quit? Probably. I mean, if she's on your roster, you're getting a sense of her personality. But what we know for sure is that Women are great concealers and deceivers. So if you are not sharp, they might trick you into thinking that they are something that they are not. That's something being a good woman. Carrying on. Britain writes, how does one deal with or punish changing behavior in a negative way from a girlfriend, mother of your child, wife, meaning she has a slick tongue, is disagreeable, calling you out of your name? Whoa, that, those are extreme things. Appreciate your work. Peace of the saints. Well, number one, uh, there are levels to things. You see, there are some inmates who, when locked in a prison, they find themselves in a hell hole and their goal within that hell is to become the devil. They say, I'm in hell right now in prison. I'm going to be the baddest, meanest, most vicious inmate in here. They're comfortable. They thrive in chaos. They're wicked people. Now, if you're female you're dealing with is a wicked person. There's no reforming her. You can punish her. You can explain to her. You can teach her. You can discipline her. If she's wicked, she's wicked. Then there are those who just need some love and some guidance. I recommend two resources for you. Number one is a video called um, How to Punish a Female. It's on patreon.com slash the saint in the center. It may be uh, linked below. Uh, but if not, go to patreon.com slash the saint in the center. There's an actual video on how to punish a female if it becomes necessary. But I don't like to be punishment oriented. I like to be education oriented and positive. So if you haven't checked out conference one footage, we talk about why some women hate men. It's an important video to watch to start to get a greater understanding of this female, because if this woman is calling you out of your name, those are serious things. And you really want to get to the root of what is driving that and exposing that root, then maybe you might treat the root cause of it. D305 writes, peace to the saints, peace to the saints. Activity log writes, Marquette, have you dealt with a woman not wanting you to see other women? Yeah, that's 99.9% .9 of them. I've been honest, the woman I'm dealing with no longer feels special and we'll leave if I continue. 14 months. How would you maneuver? Well, if you've been with her 14 months, 
that's a lot of months. <clears throat> that means she has a sense of who you are and the level at which she values you. So if she doesn't value you enough after 14 months to stick with you through thick and thin or through whatever you choose to do, then she's not the one. Now, what will probably happen is that you guys will have some like kind of breakup and then you'll end up smashing a couple more times and you'll have a broken romance. And that's OK. It happens like that. But eventually you'll have to kick her to the curb. The truth is that it takes a special woman, a woman of great morality to be able to, you know, deal with a man who's living like that. After 14 months, she's been able to measure you. And if she's measuring it up and saying, I can get someone who is as good as you and will be faithful, or at least will lie about being faithful, then it is what it is. You just got to deal with that reality. At the end of the day, the truth is that there's power in being able to walk away, being able to walk away from her, leave her where she stands. And sometimes you have to exercise that power. Uh, by the way, can someone repost Yoel's question? And mind you, if you have a question that you uh, super chatted by cash, I've just put like all caps super chat and then just put your question. It's easier for me to see in the in the chat, especially because some folks like Yoel might not necessarily have the same uh, name on YouTube that they have on their cash app. Thanks for sharing that link, Steam Rolling. Peace to the saints and thank you to these extraordinary moderators. Want to acknowledge Esteban. He writes, Peace of the Saints, any dress code for the conference? One, anywhere you go, always bring exercise clothes. So bring some exercise clothes. Uh, bring some dress up clothes to get dressed up in. And then uh, wear something comfortable. So one exercise outfit, one dress up outfit, and then one comfortable outfit. Um, always, you know, wearing black is always, uh, you know, a, a good go. Shout out to Sherlock Stoner and peace to the saints. Shout out to the whole Stoner family. Came right back. He writes, off to work, peace to the saints. Um, I don't need any housekeeping. Uh, can I get some hand towels? Yes, yes, please. Yes, yes, please. Um, two hours, one hour? Um, two hours. Two hours? Yeah. Okay. Right. Are, are you fasting for uh, Ramadan? So how do you know? Yes. You're from Indonesia. Are you Muslim? No. No? How are you? Yeah. yeah I'm good. But today I'm fasting. I understand. I understand. Well, Ramadan, tell me. Okay, thank you so yeah, much. Have a good day. I come in two hours. Okay. Good day, sir. You too. All right. Uh, sorry about that. Um, anyways, carrying on. So she doesn't find you to be special. It's OK, because uh, when she says you, you're you not making her feel special, you should be like, you're not making me feel special. I told you what I need. And to be special is to be unique. And I'm unique. These other suckers will accept you uh, trying to dominate them and make them be monogamous with you. Well, I need something different. I'm special. So, you know, it is what it is. Carrying on. I want to acknowledge Alex. He writes, Peace of the Saints. Does having one kid lower your dating value? If you're a woman, absolutely. If you're a man, yes, but not as much. And the reason is because we know men don't stick with their kids as much as women do, whether it's having the kid live with you or the amount of time you spend with the kid. And so in as much as that's the case, you know, not as much. But what you should understand is that when you have a child, there are certain women who are not going to want to deal with you because they want to start things fresh. That's understandable, but it's not going to take you out of the game. There are a lot of soft hearted women who will come to you young and single with no kids and no previous divorces. And, and you can, you know, get things done. The key is that you have to put in work. Anything you want in life, you just have to work for it. And it's going to take time. And it's going to take effort. And that's with regards to business and females. The sad reality is you have people, these are mostly the wicked men, they or not men, the wicked males, the haters. They sit back and they're filled with jealousy. They'll look at me and they say, you get women because you're tall or because you're good looking or because you're wealthy. Now realizing, no, I got a spit game just like you got a spit game. I mean, check this out. Everything that can be perceived as an advantage is also, in some cases, a disadvantage. I met, I met a young lady recently, good looking young lady, and I was talking to her and I uh, 
got her contact information and she looked up my name. And then when she looked up my name, she says to me, um, you know, I don't look anything like these blonde girls I saw on your Instagram. And in my head, I'm thinking, this is sad. You're so typically female. One, you're an FBI agent. You did all this research. And then number two, um, you're always concerned with your externality. And number three, your self-esteem is just like, it doesn't really exist. It's so fluctuating. And number four, you're always comparing yourself to other women. And number five, you watch TV and you believe the things you see on TV. It's a pity. Like, you don't know anything about what that was about. You don't know if I'm just smashing those girls. And if I'm trying to create something real with you, you have no information, but you're making guesses. But I say that to say this. That woman eventually told me, well, why do you want me? Which is her suggestion that a guy like me in my position, whether it's her perceiving me to be good looking, tall, wealthy, well-dressed, charming, whatever it is, she perceives me to not want her because she doesn't think in some way she's good enough. You see, so me, even the women that I might be actually interested in, because I'm interested in the inside of the woman, the morality, her ability to earn, her ability to be a, a good caregiver, caretaker for me, for children, if I have children, for my business affairs, that's what I'm interested in. But they look at me and confuse me for one of these goofballs on the internet who are trying to teach you how to get a bad B. So they think I want a bad B, which is not what I want, even though I got a, a couple of them, you hear me? And so because of that, I'm disadvantaged. You see, I, I try to holler out a girl who perceives herself as average. And she's like, nah, nah, you're not serious about me. So the women with morals don't even want to mess with me off rip. And, and, and the women who don't find themselves to be extraordinarily attractive or they're not conceited and narcissistic, they don't want to mess with me because they think that I'm on a certain level or I look a certain way or I perceive myself as a certain thing. So if I was a more average looking guy, I'd probably have an easier time hollering at the chick. So what you have to understand that there is complexity in life, but the thing that solves it all is that hard work and dedication. Every time that hard work and dedication, I promise you. Here's Joel. He writes, after messing up with a woman and then apologizing for it. Ooh, yikes. Uh, should I reach back out first? How to play this situation? She still watches my stories on IG. Well, you know, Yoel, let her watch a little bit of Yoel TV. You did? Because if she's watching your IG story, she's still interested. And one thing that does not make the vagina wet is when you're, when you're thirsty, when you're in pursuit of them. They like to be confused. They like to wonder why you're interested, you know. And so you got to make them work for it. So, nah, I wouldn't say go back to them. And the funny thing is you don't want to give the female ammunition to use against you. Sometimes it's good to apologize because you're wrong. Other times, depending on the nature of the mistake, it's not good to apologize to a female because they take that as, yes, you're wrong. You're wrong. And remember, most females never take responsibility or apologize. So you're showing responsibility and taking responsibility from for one of your errors and displaying that to a person or a being that never apologizes and never takes responsibility. So they never view themselves as wrong, but often view you as wrong. And now you're verifying it. So now they have a, a verification of their narrative in their head that you're a screw up or that you're not doing the right thing. So sometimes it's just better to correct your error. Uh, so should you reach out to her? Nah, not right now. Let her watch a little bit more Yoel TV, you dig? And then when you start seeing her viewing of your stuff tapering off, then you go ahead and reach back out if she hadn't reached back out already. But ideally, you want her to come back crawling. And D writes, peace to the saints. Lifestyle alignment is in similar interests, hobbies, and future vision for family. Okay. But stronger connection with the other as an emotionally and communicating on a deeper level. <sighs> well, I mean, carry on with both of them. And if you're a monogamous man or you're planning to be monogamous, carry on with both of them. And, and then, you know, the one that's meant to be will separate herself out and then you can uh, do away with the other one. B.I.G. writes, Mark, I have a presentation coming up in front of my class. How can I get over the nerves? Uh, practice. You see, an expert or a professional, they practice something until they cannot get it wrong. An amateur practices until they get it right. Say that one more time backward. An amateur practices until they get it right. 
a professional practices until they cannot get it wrong. Practice, that's all it is. Joseph writes, posting question in the chat. So Joseph, go ahead and uh, shoot your question into the chat. Shout out to Steve Jimenez. He has a product on the way in production. Nana writes, you are spitting facts. These suckers don't get it. Looks can be a disadvantage. Oh, true indeed. <laughs> Stephen writes, Marquette, we talking about practice, right? Absolutely. We talking about practice in a real way. Yes, indeed. Joseph, is this your question? He writes, what are your thoughts on two leaders in a heterosexual relationship? Some believe it's a thing. Uh... No, that's not a thing. That's not a thing. Okay, if that was your question, thank you. I'll just go ahead and confirm that. That is not a thing. And Rob is right. They do automatically think you're a player because you have your options. And some men take their options indiscriminately. And when I was younger, I would be a, a touch more indiscriminate. You know, nowadays, I even like smashing chicks that nobody else is smashing. That's That's more interesting to me. Or I like to smash chicks who have flavor. You hear me? I want to go try to smash this punk rock girl. You know, I'm not trying to smash the big booty video hoe. That's of no interest to me. Probably because I did it so many times. Carrying on. Uh, Steam rolling sends intuition by a cash app. Go ahead, send in your thoughts, questions, comments by a cash app or PayPal. I will address them. One thing I also want you to be aware of as men, and this is why I teach so much about developing yourself in the critical areas of health, wealth, spirituality, relationships. You see, the male's requirements of the female are often base and basic. It has so much to do with her appearance. But male, uh, the, the woman's requirements of the male it doesn't have to do with what we were born with entirely. A lot of it has to do with what we become. You see, when, when we look at a woman and we're like, ooh, it's because what she was born with, you know, the breasts, the derriere, the appearance in the face, that's what she was born with. She didn't earn any of that. And that's how you know you're immature, underdeveloped, or low class, not economically, but low class in terms of how you think and live. You're like an animal. You know, so most males are like animals. They're looking at the female and they're attracted her to her based on her genetics, the physical genetics, not even the intellectual, not the character faculties. Conversely, the woman, yes, she wants the guy who's six foot tall and muscular, but the muscle, you got to build the muscle. That's based on your behavior, your activities and habits. She likes a guy who has reputation or clout. That's based on what you've accumulated by living a life of meaning. She wants a guy who's wealthy. That's based on what you have amassed, based on your activities. So we have the good fortune that we can actually become what they want or become what we want to be. And that is attractive. If you're born as a female and you're shaped like a rectangle and you're skinny or you're shaped like a rectangle and you're fat, even worse, you have bad genetics. There's really not much you can do about that. There's some surgeries you can get, but at the end of the day, you're kind of stuck. Whereas a man, you can be born with horrible genetics, be overweight, prematurely balding, have a lazy eye, look like Biggie Smalls and still have women give you them draws. So it's a great opportunity, but most men don't step up to the challenge. They'd rather sit back and complain, be in my comments saying things like, oh, yeah, yeah, you spit at, you spit game at that girl, but do it without the jewelry. Bruh, uh, first off, I've been wearing jewelry since, um, you know, not that recent. You know, I haven't been wearing jewelry a long time. I wore some jewelry when I was in high school for a short time, but most of my life I didn't wear jewelry. And I got more hoes than clothes my whole life. Guys want to make excuses or they'll say, well, what if you weren't six foot or taller? Well, I've hollered at girls that are six, three, six, five. You heard me? Polo players, super tall. Yeah, man. And I climb up in them draws, boy, and wear it out. The fact is that 
we got so many excuses as men when really that's not what being a man is about. Another thing I want women to understand and real men to understand is that, as they call it now, a high value man will sleep with a woman who is a low value woman. Sure, especially if she thick, we'll sleep with her. But a real man will not stay with her. He'll lay with her, but he won't stay with her. And what the female, especially the unaware female, most of them are delusional, especially when the emotions get involved. You see, when a woman wants you and or loves you or thinks she loves you, nothing makes sense anymore. So that's why when the saint earlier said, well, she says she doesn't feel special and she won't let me have other women, then she's not where you want her. You did, because I remember the first time I really was in a super playerific situation and I told a female, I don't want to be with you. And she said, why? I said, because I want other women. And she said, oh, that's fine. Just keep me, though. Hold on to me, though. You see, when they really love you, all this circumstantial stuff, it's irrelevant. The problem is that she don't really love you. A lot of times, these modern women, they love themselves or they love nothing and no one. I mean, we heard a young lady uh, last night say she didn't trust her own mother. I'm like, God damn. Now, granted, I do want to acknowledge her mother could be ruthless. Her mom could be a total animal. I do want to acknowledge that. But when the, the basics like that are not covered in terms of the females like emotions, like when you don't know that there's that that level of love waiting for someone, ideally for you, and you don't feel that from her, something's missing. Something ain't right. And it's never going to be right. You dig 14 months in. If the love ain't there at the level you need, it's never going to be there. 14 months is a lot of time. I want to acknowledge Mike Saldivar, always coming through with the support. Harry writes, peace to the saints. How do you ignore rejection after going 0 and 5, LOL? That's not LOL. That's See, that's the problem right there. That's not LOL. There's nothing wrong with being lighthearted, but that's not funny. Going 0 and 5 is not funny. Step one, get serious about winning. Step one, get serious about winning. When you get step one done, all the other steps are going to come. And I know about this because I've been taking a lot of losses in the last two months. All kinds, there's been evil surrounding me in the last two months. A lot of things that shouldn't have gone wrong have gone wrong. But guess what? I know that when they're going wrong, a major part of it, one, of course, is a lot of evil around. There's so many haters, it's crazy. But major key to success is me. I'm not serious enough about winning. And you know why I know I'm not serious enough about winning? Because this life makes it too easy for me to get uh, start joking about it. You know, do you know how hard it is to be serious about winning? If you guys really follow my work, what you'll notice is that you see me somewhere else play a riffrit every damn time I talk to you. You hear me? You, you see me somewhere with the double doors, the double door entrance every, entrance every time. The guest bathrooms, curved couches. You, you, you see me with the beautiful views every time you hear from me. Do you know how hard it is to stay motivated when I could look at this mountain view from eight different suites? Do you know how hard it is to stay motivated? It's real hard. And that's why every time I start losing, I know I start losing because I'm not focused. I'm not hungry. Do you, what the hell is this? I don't even know what the hell that is. It's unnecessary. We call that opulence. And when I walk in and I got the his and her bathroom and it's just me, Dolo, bro, it's hard to stay motivated. You guys saw the, the maid service come through. She said, when do you want me to come back? I'll come back when you tell me to come back. When you're living like that, it's hard to stay motivated. So I'm telling you the same thing I'm telling myself right now. Your ass ain't serious. That's why you ain't you ain't winning. Because it's not about going 0 for 5. There's nothing wrong with that. What's wrong is that it's 0 for 5. It should be 0 for 100. When you get serious about winning, it's going to be 0 for 100. And then when you get to 200, it's not going to be an 0 anymore because you can't go at it 200 times and lose. You got to get serious about winning. And I'm not saying this to go hard on you. I'm going hard on myself too because I've been bullshitting. You heard me? You got to be serious and serious. And winning requires discipline. You got to be a robot. You got to go into machine mode. Bro, I'm serious about winning. I really love winning and I really hate losing. I love winning strongly.
obsessively and I hate losing in the same way. So I want you to get serious about it. That's number one. So this LOL stuff, cut that out. It's not necessary. And it means laugh out loud. You didn't laugh out loud about that. I hope you didn't because the shit ain't fun. Further, he writes, also, have you uploaded any stocks info? Do you own any Bitcoin? I don't currently own any Bitcoin. And I will be uploading uh, stock videos. I'm going to make a note of that for you right now, actually. Upload stock videos. So thank you for that reminder. So those at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center who especially want to win financially will be able to see that. Indeed. Activity Log writes, yes, I hear you, Marquette. In addition, she said she isn't special if I'm doing the same things with them. With her and she can't disrespect herself anymore. Oh, God, kill it. Uh, correction, it's been 17 months. Oh, goodness. Yeah, yeah, bro, kill it. It's all good, man. Let her do all that babbling. And let me teach you something else, too. You put it out there verbally. It's fine. Now you just need to take the actions. Do what you're going to do. Because a lot of times with women, you're never going to win talking with them. Because number one, they're not logical. So you can't reach a logical conclusion, no matter how much sense you make. It's an emotional thing that's going to control their behavior and reaction. So it's their emotional connection to them, to you, that's going to make them accept what you do. So there's no need to talk about it any further. Take the actions. Do what you're going to do. Someone wrote, women are players and are talking to so many men you can't play on their level. Whoa. No, women are not players. That is a term that is specifically designated for the male. So that would be inappropriate. It would be an abuse of the English language. Women are not players. Rob writes facts. I hollered at a 6'4 chick and pulled. You dig? I was at the post office yesterday and saw a chick that was 6'3. She was reckless eyeballing a pee. You dig? And hey, the funny thing is when you walk up on a chick that's taller than you and you walk up like a real boss, they be mind boggled. They mind boggled. Cause they're looking at you wondering why you feel like that. And I'm looking at the broad, like, look, little broad, little bitty bitch, little bitty bitch. You are six, three, six, four, six, five. But bitch, I feel like I'm eight, nine. You heard me? I'm eight, nine. So respect this game. I'm about to kick at you. This is all a mental game. Shout out to jo uh, Joseph. Enrique writes, peace to the saints. Most men are very shallow. Indeed, most women too. Accepting bad behavior from women is strictly because of her looks. Nine out of nine. Her spirit and values are equally important. In fact, they're more important. Dylan writes, I had a chick back in the day tell me I'm too good looking for her. Yeah, they say stuff like that and they mean it too. I was confused at the time, but now I understand it. I think that's why you see pretty girls are with ugly guys. Uh, uh, there's a variety of reasons you see attractive women with men who are unattractive. But the number one thing is that men don't have to be attractive. That's what we get confused into. Especially the guys who think they're good looking. I hear a lot of guys will often DM me like, hey, Marquette, I'm tall. I'm good looking. I'm this, I'm that. I'm like, okay, well, cool. You should be flooded with hoes. What's the problem? It's because you ain't got that thing on the inside that they're looking for. Men don't have to be attractive. And that's why we don't wear makeup and real men don't need to get these goddamn hair implants and these this all this BS. You got men out here wearing makeup trying to look as good as a broad look. That's inappropriate. It shows that you really don't feel like a man on the inside. He writes, they won't cheat. Carrying on. <laughs> I mean, even ugly guys do cheat. I mean, it's sad. It is. Um, it's sad that women believe you did. Nas, nice. they, they don't want a real man. That's, that's the thing. They can't handle it. A lot of the good looking women are not with ugly guys because um, they can't handle the good looking guy. They're, they're with ugly guys because the ugly guys because of the way they were brought up in the society, meaning the way that women reacted to them since they were a young person coming up, they feel so thankful for the woman that they overvalue her and they treat her too well. And she has been treated well because of her appearance. And so she's gotten this false idea that she has value solely because of her appearance. And so when a real man treats her according to her true worth, which is based on her values, and based on her morals, which she doesn't have, so he's going to treat her like she's down here. She can't reconcile that reality of how he's treating her with how others and most of the society has treated her based on her looks. So she gets with the ugly guy so her low self-esteem can feel falsely inflated and she can feel that temporary but fleeting sense of happiness. But all the same, she's going to catch a guy like me and get beat down on the late night. You dig? 
Nasruddin writes, peace to the saints. What are ways that you can build discipline and good habits? Number one, have a schedule. Number two, uh, write down your goals. Joseph writes, oh, it comes in with tuition. Appreciate it. Mr. Cambry comes in. Very consistent, the saint is. Bence writes, master the ones willing to be mastered. Ooh, I like that. Master the ones willing to be mastered. You dig? Which people say life is short. I don't know that that is true. But one thing I can say is that time moves quickly, especially when you're having fun. And with time moving quickly and us knowing that we don't know how much time we have, this whole ride can end unexpectedly. You dig? Somebody could fly an airplane into this building right now. We don't know. That being the case, you have to value your time and you need to get the most out of it. With regards to women, if you're approaching women or you're in a relationship with a woman and she's not picking up on your program, go ahead and uh, marginalize her and find a woman who wants to come in and play the game. And guess what? The name of the game is Simon Says. And guess who Simon is? You did. If you don't know that you're Simon, then you're the problem, not the woman. If you don't know you're, you're the leader, you're the problem, not the woman. He writes, ready, willing, and able. Indeed. The podcast yesterday was hilarious. Keep going, Marquette. Peace to the Saints. I appreciate that. It was uh, comical and educational. And what you observe in our podcast versus any other podcast on the internet is there is no more charm you're going to see it anywhere on the internet. There is no more better an example of how to interact with women in some cases and beautiful women, in some cases broken women, in some cases combative women. And that is what you should seek to ascertain or learn when you're watching the Saint City podcast. You did. And also know that I'm really living like that. You heard me is on a podcast now, but that's how we've been living for a lifetime. And that's the difference. Some people are doing it for TV, but I'm doing it and I'm just doing me. You did. Mr. Cambry writes, will this be going private? Might have to replay. Marcus writes, I've had women tell me I come off arrogant and judgmental. Any kind, any advice for fixing this piece of the saints? Well, number one, judgmental is certainly something that stops women from sharing information, especially women who have no morals. They begin to hide and deceive even more. Even a good woman is going to deceive at some level, even if it's subconsciously driven. So that is there. The less judgment you speak out of your mouth, the stronger position you will be in and the more information you'll get. So I highly recommend that you do not speak judgment, that you lead through example and you lead through the way that you behave, the environments that you put her in. You That is going to be a good example. And if she can't pick up what you're putting down, which is to say, if you go to a restaurant and you never order wine, if you never take her to a club and she can't pick up who you are based on your behaviors, she's a goofy broad. Um, further, if you have to chastise a woman verbally and tell her what not to do a lot, then that's an indication that's the wrong woman for you. Or she's better to be a side girl. And a side girl, let her do what she do. That's why she's a side girl. She's a free bird. She's the kind who wants a long leash. You see, a woman that you have to give a lot of guidance to means that she doesn't have the basics in order. Most women who are well aligned with you, you're not going to have to give much guidance. And further, what's better, they will seek guidance from you. They will ask you your perspective because that is what a leader is there for, to be good guidance and counsel to a woman. Joseph writes, keep dropping jewels, big homie. That's all I got. Uh, super player, Robert Jones writes, peace to the Saints boss talk. I'm hearing how you, I'm hearing I'm hearing you on how comfort kills hunger and drive. Oh, true indeed. Glad I checked in on this live. What are your thoughts on keeping female employees in biz? Oh, I think female employees can be lovely. And it really depends on the nature of the female and the way that you position them. In some positions, it's necessary to only hire females. I made the mistake of hiring a male assistant one time. It didn't go very well. He writes, I've seen you do it. Oh, absolutely. I'm a big believer. And women are very detail oriented. They're great at risk management. They're great at seeing problems and systems. They're great at proofreading. There are certain things that they excel in. And more importantly, they put their emotions into their work. So if you need something that needs to be done with care, hire a female. If you need something that requires big picture thinking and getting things done, if you have a job that it requires that, the job get done even while things are not quite right or a little bit broken, you're going to have to hire a man. That's why most leaders and most CEOs are men, because when you start a new business, like a, a tech startup, 
you know some things about your your application your mobile app they're bugs but you have to push it out to the market even with the bugs women don't feel comfortable doing that so it takes a man to get that kind of a job done he writes same rules apply thoughts oh indeed yes sir Thank you for sending in tuition. Good to hear from you saying you're just on my mind yesterday. Michael writes, peace of the saints, been in the trenches, tuition. Oh, you know what? We're all in the trenches. The problem lies when we forget that we're in the trenches, when we stop going into war, war with the outside world and war with ourselves. And that's why I always tell you, if you have an enemy, you should be attacking them because anytime you're not attacking them, they're getting strengthened to attack you and they're an enemy. They're going to do what enemies do. So don't ever sleep on the job, but further realize that you must be at war with yourself. This is the true meaning of the word jihad. You hear this word jihad in the Islamic religion, which people think of war with the outside only, but the biggest jihad is the internal war, war against your own weakness. Right now, the Muslims are fasting. It's war against lack of discipline. It's war against gluttony. It's war against all those things. But it's challenging yourself. That's the greatest war, the one that we often forget. When you find that you're losing, it's because you've become weak. And it's so easy to become weak, especially when you're winning, huh? especially when you're winning. But the thing is, the goal has to be keep winning. And that's what you can learn from a guy like Floyd Mayweather. Man trains like a goddamn animal. Uh, Reginald writes, big facts. You did. Them big facts. Joseph sends intuition. Appreciate it. Oh, it looks like we have a uh, spammer in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and block them. I want to empower the moderators uh, to get these folks out of here as appropriate. Rob writes, tell them, pimp and as men, our value and ability to pull comes from the man within, not external. Oh, agree. You can be 6'8", 10% body fat. If you can't open your mouth and command, the bitch going to play you. Oh, true indeed. And I tell you, the guy who put me onto the most game, Kevin Cox, my OG now deceased, might have fucked himself to death. I don't know how it happened. But anyways, this man was like 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and massively overweight. He's 5'6", five, 5'7", five, and significantly overweight. Super player, though. <laughs> None of it mattered. Ezekiel writes, Peace of the Saints, do you believe in the benefits of semen retention? For example, women attraction, more testosterone, more confidence, etc. I believe that every man should release semen on the schedule that's appropriate for his body and feeling strength. I would probably refrain from releasing semen when I have important things to do, whether they're athletic or I need to be hyper-focused. But there comes a time when it's appropriate to release Marcos writes, the Peace of the Saints arrived late, so I had to rewind it from the beginning. You did. Yoel writes, how to get more serious in situations that warrant it. I've always been a chill person all my life, but I struggle to turn that off when necessary. No, nah, that's not chill. That means you're bullshitting, you see, because I'm also very chill. You did. You know, if you catch me out in Cancun or you catch me out in the Bahamas or you catch me out in, in Dubai or you catch me out in fill in the blank, I'm chill. Because I'm on vacation. I'm on holiday. It's time to be chill. You got to know what time it is. There's a difference be between being chill and bullshitting. There's a difference between being chill and not being appropriate for the occasion. You see, oh, there's no sense in being chill when it comes to getting your Skrilla together. There's no sense in being chill when you need to crack that broth that everybody else is trying to crack as well. No, nah, that's not chill. That means you ain't winning. You're lacking ambition. And you're not going to win until you get serious, until the stakes are high. And I tell you, man, I always keep the stakes high. And you got to punish yourself when you lose or when you don't perform. Being chill is a different thing. You heard me? Like, chill is what I am. I'm from California. I think that's where they invented this shit in Southern California. You know, snooping double OP. That's where it come from. That West Coast living, baby. I mean, half them boys is high on any goddamn ways, man. They super chill. But uh, it's a major difference between being chill and then being ambitious at the appropriate time. A chill person can be ambitious. Don't fool yourself. Don't lie to yourself. These are euphemisms. This is what females often do. Uh, instead of saying that they're fat, they say they're curvy. I'm like, nah, broad, you're not curvy. In fact, you're shaped like a refrigerator. You're fat. But they call themselves curvy. Don't delude yourself. It's not chill. It's a lack of ambition. It's a lack of making things matter. You got to make it matter. Like, I, I, for example, I play psychological games with myself all the goddamn time. There have been times I've walked up to get in my car, right? I walked up to get in my car. It doesn't matter what car it is. I got one car that ain't shit. But my other cars, when I walk up to get in the car, I see people might be talking about the car. Sometimes I'll take a picture with the car. And I'll stand there like it's not my car and listen to them and even have a conversation with them. 
and they'll be like, oh man, that car is crazy. But yeah, that shit is crazy. That shit is dope. I'll have a whole conversation with them to hear about how they perceive the car and how they perceive the person who probably drives the car. Because I need the motivation. Because once you are the one who drives the car, the car don't mean that much to you anymore. And I've told this story before, I'll, sh I'll share briefly. When I used to drive the Rolls Royce to a gas station, it was an event. You pull up to the gas station, you can't even fill up the tank without somebody trying to have a conversation with you. And when you first get the car, it's fun. It's like, damn, this is awesome. This is a great car. And I'm a big deal now. But then eventually you pull up to the gas station, you're looking around, you're trying to hurry up and fill up your tank before somebody walk up because you don't want to be at the gas station for 20 minutes talking to motherfuckers, right? So it's going to have a different meaning. And that's what happens in life. Things take on different meaning after you get it. A gorgeous woman is not gorgeous after you've had her. A, a, an expensive car doesn't mean anything after you've driven it a couple times. So you have to keep playing psychological games to keep yourself in the game and keep yourself intense, especially if you're like me and you came from nothing. Because here's the thing. You see me in all these, these suites and all this stuff. I came from the gutter. So I already feel like I won 30 times over what anyone could have expected me to win. So it's like, what's left? So if you don't keep your head in the game, you're going to slow down quickly. You're going to slow down and become stagnant. So get your head in the game. And keep listening to this ism because I ain't got no mercy. And you motivate me, make me want to go harder. Because when you guys talk about losing, I think about how I'm losing. And the worst thing to do is to hang around people who are not winning because they look up to you like you're winning. See, people look up to me and be like, oh, man, you're doing so well. But I got to keep it in my head that I'm not doing well. You heard me? Play those games with yourself. Edward writes, where's some different and more effective ways of meeting women? Uh, you should be meeting women any and everywhere. Like, for example, you saw the, the maid come to clean the room. She was actually cute, low key, just by the way, she was cute. Um, older though, so I couldn't mess with her. But anyways, if she was attractive and young, I could have cracked her right then and there. And, and I should if she was attractive to me. The thing is, you're looking for venues. No, you're supposed to be meeting women in regular life. That's number one. And then number two, understand that familiarity is king with a woman because they're trust animals. So whereas you see a guy who might not be attractive or wealthy and he has a girl who is attractive, that's because he built up that familiarity. It's much easier for a guy who is familiar with a woman to get her out on a first date than it is for a guy to go meet her, be a stranger, holler at her, and then get her to go on that first date. Trust is key, especially if there's not a strong desire. And it's usually the desire of sex that gets a woman to act and go out with you. And those are the women that you really don't want that are driven by sex. B.I.G. writes, I'm 19 years old. Excuse me, in my 19 years of life, no female has ever opened the door for me. Last week on two different occasions, two attractive girls opened the door for me, though I wasn't near them. Does this mean anything? It might, it might not, but I tell you what, walk through that door proudly. And what I want you to do in terms of your mental condi conditioning, and this took some time for me to accept. You see, you have to accept who you really are. And if you're a great man, live in that reality. When I first hired assistants, I would be, especially when I was in Chicago, when I first started hiring assistants, I'd be in Chicago. And when I walk into these high rise uh, buildings, there would be no black people in there except the ones who were in the janitorial positions or the secretarial positions or the security positions. So they would see me and they would feel esteem because I was like the only black guy that was like in the office on a boss level. Most of them were in the service industry. So they'd feel esteem when they see me and I would feel proud to be there as their representative, so to speak. But I'd have my assistants and they would open the door for me and then I would step back and hold the door and let them go in. And then eventually I realized, well, what the hell? Number one, I'm paying them. And number two, they're the assistant, I'm the boss. So as a boss, even though she's a woman, now let her hold the door, the door for a P, you did. Just like a P is not gonna hold the door for the hoe. You heard me, a P is gonna let the hoe hold, hold the door and let the pimping walk in. You gotta realize where you're at and live in that reality. Even if people on looking don't understand it or respect it, they don't have to respect it. They're gonna respect this bread. They're gonna respect these diamonds dancing like Michael Jackson, you heard me? And they're gonna respect the position I'm really in. 
they could stick their nose up if they want. And it's fine because it's going to get like that. There's going to be a lot of haters on the planet Earth. But the thing is, when people are watching me and they see a woman hold the door open for me, they might think, oh, he's impolite. But they're looking at it like that's my girlfriend or that's my wife. No, that's my assistant. And she's assisting. So let her hold that goddamn door for the pimping. And the pimping going to walk through with his head high because that's how it got to be. And it's okay that people don't understand. So I tell you what, when you get to the level where, where they holding the door for a reason, walk through that motherfucker proudly. Sergio sends intuition. The Jewish bear writes, peace to the saints. Thanks for the game, player. Oh, it, it is my duty because there's so many uh, fake players trying to put a, a player jersey on and hop in the game. You did. Give me your bad game. I'm here to clean it up, taking a red pin to the game. Shout out to Ian. Sends intuition. L99 writes, I like feet. Is that bad? Good for you, saint. Uh, disagreeable, right? Slow dough is better than no dough, right? As long as the dough grow, that's the key. Make sure that the money machine is running up. Supreme Seon, right? Sending tuition on my way to work to close some sales. ABC, always be closing. Peace of the saints. Oh, true indeed. Mitchell writes, peace of the saints. Sends intuition. He's the creator of the jab journal. Go get you one, especially if you need some focus in life. Victor writes, there's a cat on YouTube with a fake voice talking greasy. I'm just waiting for you to verbally slap his cap off. Well, the funny thing is we don't address people who don't even have the decency to be who they are because we always go back to the three sentence Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. If you can't even be yourself, truly, you're not of us. You are not saintly. You are wicked. And the wicked, nah, we won't give them any life. In fact, we will give them the opposite. Death. Carrying on. Pharaoh NFL writes, peace to the saints. Love the channel. Keep up the good work. You're doing something right if you have haters. Bruh, you're doing so much right. And the key is to use them in the right way to keep on going and keep producing. And I will remind you that the haters will often be those who are in poverty and those who are ugly. It's broke people and ugly people. Those are the ones who hate because the ones who are winning and succeeding, they don't have time to hate. In fact, you would have noticed I had a video. I was going to do a live session to destroy my stand, my stands, you know, those fans that turn into haters. And then I realized, I was like, I got so much game. I got so much game I got to give out. The haters will have to wait because I got to keep my eyes on the prize. You did. And though it may be entertaining, it will not benefit your life to hear me destroy these haters. CJ Bailey writes, Saint, what are some important goals in the near future you wish to reach within the assassin to spend more time in person? And the conference is going to be step one in that. And then I'm going to have a chance to assess because I'm trying to do it as bare bones as possible. I'm going to have a chance to assess what I actually can get done. So that's step one. But I'm also really excited because the information is so good that these gentlemen are going to uh, have a chance to get. But the key is to create a model that's small. And it's in person because I truly believe you build relationships in person. You build business connections, friendships and all those things in person. You build trust in person. And I want to see if we can do it uh, more. But right now, as of now, I'm not planning on doing it ever again. So right now, a lot of things are up in the air. Um, but my number one goal is to uh, meet in person with the Saints and then get a sense on how we want to move from there. And then number two, and that'll be happening in two weeks at the conference. And then number two. Um, I want to redo the website, the Sassin website, remove membership completely. And I want to put up the GSIC, G-S-I-C, Global Standards in Civilization, which are global standards that can be followed around the world for men and women to live in a saintly way, to start establishing good culture. Thank you for that question. Joseph writes, the ism is real. Oh, true indeed. Stephen writes, peace of the saints, you are essential. Thank you for the constant game and motivation. I look forward to the day I can pay you back in full. I appreciate that. And I look forward to the day that you have that, you feel that prosperity. Ale uh, Alexis Tibbs comes in with a baller alert. Peace to the saints. Good to hear from you. Shout out to the lady saints. You did. Jolik writes, peace to the saints. Tuition. Damien writes, just picked up how to win friends and influence people. Logic writes, how do you handle family that you do not invite, that do not invite you anywhere and spread rumors out of jealousy? Well, if they don't invite you anywhere, that might be a good thing because it sounds like they're not good people and you don't want to spend time around those who are not good people. And more importantly, if they spread rumors about you, you have to ask yourself, well, does this matter? Who are they spreading the rumors to? And further, sometimes you come to this realization about haters. Number one, there's no logic or, or reasoning that can make sense to a hater. And you guys all have haters. I know you do. The more you're successful, the more, the more the haters will increase. And consider this. 
my assistants all the time because they know what I really do and they know who I really am. They'll sometimes see some of these videos popping up in their YouTube feed. Sometimes they're signed into my account. Sometimes they're on their account. And they'll say, Mark, like, what's up with these people? Like, why are they literally making up lies? And I say, love, they're, they're haters. The root word is hate. They have hatred and hatred is irrational. They're like, yeah, but they're lying. I was like, it's okay. That's what they're going to do. They're haters. Haters hate. Liars lie. That's what they do. You can't stop it. And for those who spread rumors, I say this, because my, my assistants all the time are saying, Mark, we need to sue these people. They're slandering you. Let's sue them. Let's 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 find out who everyone, let's sue them. They're, they're lying. And I say, no, no, we're not going to do that. Because here's the thing, love. They're slandering, meaning they're literally making up lies, which is illegal when you, especially when you make up lies about people's business affairs. This can, you can be sued for this because you're hurting their brand. You're hurting their reputation as far as business goes. And you're saying things that are clearly untrue. And I say, you know what, love, what you have to realize is that when they make up a lie about Marquette Devon Burton, only a fool would believe the lie. You see a wise person, if they hear someone who's drinking alcohol, slurring their speech, yelling on a YouTube live session to 30 viewers and saying, you know, Marquette is not a successful businessman. And then they look up Marquette Devon Burton and they see me at galas and they see me all around the world. They see me spending so much money in vacation. They see me living life at this high level. Your first thought has to be, well, if he wasn't successful, how do you make any money? Then your second thought has to be, okay, well, let's see if he was a real business guy. And then you look through all my businesses and you're like, okay, well, there's five different businesses I can see publicly that he started one of which is in Forbes. I've seen him on the television news, not the YouTube, but the television news. Like, well, an intelligent person can tell that it's a rumor or it's a lie or it's slander. An imbecile or a person filled with hatred, it doesn't matter what the truth is. I say that to say this. If you conduct yourself well, you're a person of merit and truth. The truth will always be there. It's incontrovertible. Malice may attack it. Ignorance may deride it. But the truth is always there, as Winston Churchill says. So only a fool would believe those rumors about you. So similarly, if someone tried to slander me and say, Marquette's a homosexual, like people would be like, the fuck? Like, <laughs> you know, it wouldn't make any sense because if you track my whole history, you'll see there's no evidence of that. So only a fool would believe it or only a hater would believe it. Same thing with you. So I say that to say, don't worry about it. They're out there. Only haters would believe these kind of things. Alexis writes, just got the jab journal. It's powerful too. Shout out. And, and that's such a positive message that uh, she shared. And there's so much love to you know share a good note and also help uh, one of the saints with their business, you know, help uh, speak well of Mitchell McCauley's products. And she's speaking truth. I have the jab journal as well. Uh, shout out to Adam. He writes, peace to the saints. Hilarious situation with my girl yesterday, but of course you handled it very respectfully. She appreciated that a lot. And by the way, and I've, I've announced this before, uh, number one, Saints, if your girl ever follows me on IG or sees any of my stuff, immediately I want her to send me a DM like, hey, just heads up, I am the girlfriend of, I'm the wife of, I belong to this Saint, because I ain't going to lie to you. Some of y'all got some bad females. You heard me? Shout out to the, the Saint Adam uh, in Europe. He got him a bad female, you dig? And I was actually looking for a different female. I'm looking through my story, right? And I, I can scroll through my stories pretty quickly because it's mostly men who watch the story. So even if it's like 2000, I can go through real quick. Or I hand it off to my assistant. I'm like, hey, find me this female right here. Let me know, you know. And so go through the story. And then there's this bad female. You heard me was peeping my story. I was like, oh, I got a, I got a hot lad shorty. You heard me see what's on her mind. So I was like, let me shoot her a DM or let me like like one of her photos. I forget. I think I just liked maybe two of the photos. I was like, because she's watching Marquette TV. There's some interest here. Let me make a move here. So anyways, I, I like two of the photos. Then I get a DM. I wish I had my, fo my phone because I would tell you exactly. It's always better to quote things so it's accurate and truthful. But essentially, the young lady at message, she says, hey, Marquette, I am Adam's girlfriend, one of the saints in Europe. I just want to let you know. And I appreciate that so much because for damn sure, I was going to holler. Cause that's what I do. I'm shooting shots. I'm, I'm Steph Curry. Nigga, I don't care if I'm at the free throw. I'm shooting. If I'm at half court, I'm shooting the shot. I don't give a hell if I'm in Oklahoma and the basketball court is in Tennessee. I'm shooting the shot. That's what I do. I'm a game spitting super player. You dig? And so she was like, you know, I'm with Adam. 
And I was so happy because she she stopped it before it could get started. And that's what a woman is supposed to do. That's what a lady saint is supposed to do. And number two, every woman that's spoken for by a man, that needs to be out front. And so she put that out front. And um, and I have a lot of respect for Adam. You dig? And shout out to Adam. He got him a bad one. And he also has a woman who conducts herself appropriately. Um, so, yes, that is a hilarious situation. And Saints, uh, definitely, if your girlfriend bad and she follow Marquette TV, make sure that she put me on notice. Marquette, do not holler at me because I know you be hollering at him left and right. I really be out here. Rob writes, quote, I identify as a white woman sweatshirt touchdown recently. Great conversation starter. Skittle guzzlers out here whining, uh, out here winning championships. Don't mind me. Oh yeah, bro, it's crazy out here. But yeah, that is that that shirt is a conversation starter. And the funny thing about women is that they don't have any game. You know, I get text messages from females all the time. They'll say things like "Hi, H I." That's it. Hi. That's their game. They're just basically putting you putting themselves on your mind. That's their game. A woman's game is to get in your way so you have to address her. She's just going to put herself out there. That's their game. They don't have game. So when you got a shirt like that one that says, I identify as a white woman and you're not a white woman, it's a conversation starter. It gives her an opening uh, to you know give you a layup. You did. Miles writes, Peace of the Saints. You handled that conflict smoothly with Matthew. I appreciate your hard work and daily inspiration. Thank you. And you know, the funny thing about guys like Matthew is that he is clearly not happy in life. There's a certain way one behaves when their life is together, especially as a man. And that kind of calmness and peace and conduct is written all over you and it attracts women. You see, Matthew, when he walked up to solve the situation, especially with the training that they used to have at the win, when Steve Wynn, the founder, was there, mind you, he, he got booted out due to like hashtag me too trumped up allegations. But he used to train people on excellence in customer service. And not only did they have a lapse in customer service, they had a lapse in inter-office communication as a business. So I know things are not well there at the win. But anyways, he walked up all fast on the camera and he didn't go to a boss. He went to my cameraman. So he goes to my videographer. He's like, you can't be recording here. Now, he didn't take out time to address a boss. The appropriate thing is address a boss straight off. But he walks up all fast. Like, you can't be recording here. That's aggressive. So anytime you're in a business environment, especially one where the customer service is at a premium at a place like that, you would walk up and say, hi, because your first thing is to check. Your first thing is not to say you can't record. Your first thing is to check if you can record, because it turns out some people do have permission to record. He was not in the PR, uh, the public relations department. So he had no idea. That was the problem. He didn't check. And number two, when you're coming into a situation, you want to gather information off top, you know, figure out what's going on. As I often tell you guys, see what time it is. He didn't do that. He got very aggressive. And then what he did was he put himself in a bad position because he ain't know who he's talking to. And on the back end, Matthews had a lot of problems. And I, I'm not putting that out for public, but let's just let's just say that I took some time to put that video out after the situation was dealt with. And further, we still got a lot of lifestyle footage I'm going to put out, especially for the members. And you're going to see we recorded for like 14 hours in like nine different uh, resorts. And we had permission. You dig. There was not one time any resort asked us to stop filming except that one situation with Matthew. Further, um, other resorts that have their inter-office communication together, meaning that the public relations group told the security group or the, the v, uh, public relations group told the VIP group and they all are aware, hey, this guy is gonna come through recording. Like when we showed up at Resorts World and shout out to them, when we showed up, the security was there at the valet. It's like, hey, Mr. Burden, thank you for coming in. Would you like us to escort you so no one bothers you while you're recording? No, no, we're good. Absolutely, if you need anything, let us know. Cool, carrying on. And that's the difference. And what I want you guys to know, will I, will I be going back there to spend money? Even though they solved the situation and addressed that, a uh, silly little employee? No, absolutely not. And I don't recommend any of you do. And did we write bad reviews? Absolutely. I encourage you all to write bad reviews because within us, our, our organization, we will have power when we make ourselves felt. And that's the same thing that the LGBTQ does. If you don't go their way, they punish you. And the same thing here, you're getting punished. Miles writes, uh, oh yeah, thank you for that one. 
Lon's been very consistent. He writes, really enjoying the black box. Indeed, he writes, thanks for the time and effort you put forth. Peace to the Saints. Hashtag haters don't matter. And they really don't. And that's some of the reasons they try to hate is so that they do matter in the world and they never will. Uh, one thing I want you guys to do if you haven't read the black box is go get it. You can get a low cost copy at marquettism.com, M A R Q U E T T I S M.com. Or if you would like to have a paperback in your hand, you can go to amazon.com and just write um, the black box, Marquette Devon Burton. It'll come right up. It, it is a masterwork. And I say that having read the masterpieces, uh, whether we're talking about war and peace, we're talking about the richest man in Babylon, we're talking about how to win friends and influence people, we're talking about, you know, anything you want to name. Dostoyevsky, yeah, it's up there. And especially if we're talking about life changes at the apex. Yoel writes, thank you for never sugarcoating your answers. I cannot because we won't move forward. And I appreciate that you can handle the truth because so few can. And a young lady um, on the podcast yesterday, or yesterday, life's moving quickly. A young lady on the podcast, I said, hey, Marquette, I don't want to hurt your feelings, but and then she said something that was truthful. I said, hey, love, you're not going to hurt my feelings with the truth. I would have never made it this far if I couldn't handle the truth. You see, when you start that far down, if you can't handle the truth, you'll never make it. Because I started so far down where I could have easily blamed life on racism. I could have said, oh, my mom's on drugs. My mom, my father's in prison. My grandmother has dementia. There's no one to care for me. I live in the ghetto. I'm poor. Like I had so many excuses that were based on some level of reality. So if I couldn't handle the truth, I would have never made it forward. So, yeah, I'm all about the truth and I'm all about telling you the truth because I know those who can handle it are those who will be successful and those who can't handle it. It's OK. It is what it is. You know, even my assistants, sometimes if they're around when I'm conducting a consultation, they might hear me say something. They say, oh, that's not that's not a nice thing to say. I say, yeah, but the truth ain't nice sometimes. And I'm not trying to hurt their feelings. I'm trying to drive them faster to success. And they say, well, they're probably not going to want to do a consultation again. I said, that's okay, because low key, I don't even really have time for consultations half the time. It's just that I'm obsessed with pushing men forward who don't have anyone else to push them. I'm obsessed with that. So if they don't come back, that's okay. But I know they at least had the chance to win, because sometimes you've never heard the, the truth in your whole life. Sometimes you've never heard anyone tell you the truth. Sometimes you're a fat woman. You never heard anybody tell you you're fat. Or sometimes you're not working hard enough. You never heard anybody tell you you're lazy. Or sometimes you are working hard, but you're not working as, as hard as you should be because you haven't been around hustlers. You've been around slackers. And so, yes, you're working hard if you're comparing yourself to a slacker, but you're not hurt working hard if you compare yourself to a hustler. So, yeah, it's OK. I'm fine with it. Shout out to the linguist. Sends intuition. I got to plug this joint in real quick. Joseph writes, purchased two jab journals recently. He didn't doubled up on it. He writes, great gift to a loved one looking to throw the first punch and get things done. You dig? Give me one second, Saints. Yeah, me, I'm all about the realness. Whether you like it or not, you know, the funny thing, I want you guys to consider this. When I and I always hear this stuff from my assistants because I don't have time to, to dabble in the words of um, people who are jealous and hateful. But some of these folks, they won't even say where they work. They're trying to say, well, Marquette wasn't a successful businessman. We'll say, OK, well, where do you work? They're not real. So they're trying to assess if I'm real while they're not real. And so I want you to challenge these folks, like ask them, like, where do you work? Like, tell me where you work. If you look at my LinkedIn, you'll see everywhere I've ever worked, which was mostly running companies. Shomar writes, Peace of the Saints, wanted to ask your thoughts on the sneaker crafting industry. Would you would like to make streetwear shoes, then branch out even into making shorts? Good way to resource material and grow from one to many. Well, that's a pretty cool name, Shumar. Seems like you're focused. I'm trying to find a, a sharp question that you have here. I don't find the question to be sharp. It's going to be hard to be successful if you're not sharp, meaning knowing acutely what you need and want. 
So if I were you, I would ask myself, like, what's the number one next step that I need to achieve fill in the blank goal? If the goal is creating a prototype of your first pair of shoes, then what's the one thing I need to do next? So that's a lot of what I do in consultations. You can book at marquetism.com for the time being. But a lot of what I do is help you get your thinking clear. You know, one saint recently came and he said, Marquette, I want to do this, 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 and this, and this, and this, and this. I'm like, God damn. Well, how many of those things have you accomplished? He's like, none. I'm like, so you're going to try to do all of them at once? How about we pick the most important one and we get to work on that? Logic writes, is success the best revenge against haters slash naysayers to really have them in their feelings? Now, you know what? You don't want to take revenge on haters. I mean, if you can put them out of their misery, fantastic. Please do so. If you can do it and get away with it, please do. But otherwise, you don't want to get revenge on them. Your life is not about revenge. You're, you're not, your life is not about proving them wrong. You've already proven them wrong, right? Like, for example, in my case, you'll, ha you'll hear a hater say something like, Marqua, you're not balling. And I'm like, okay, you're right. I'm not balling. Now, would I take out time to try to prove them wrong? No, I'm going to just go ahead and say, you're right. I'm not balling. You're right. I'm not balling. And then I'm going to just go and just be like, what is that? Like, I don't even know what the hell that is. It, like, is this a couch, a day bed? Like, what the hell is this? I have no clue. Oh, and what is that behind there? That's an iconic wheel. And not only can I show you that wheel right here, but I can also show you another one that looks just like it. They actually have a, a duplicate in Dubai. And I can show you a picture with me in front of that wheel. So it's like you don't have to take out time to get revenge or to like prove them wrong. Everything you do in your life is proving them wrong. Everything you do is proving them wrong. So you don't have to take out time to do that. It's just a, it's abundantly clear. And the thing is, the onlookers, they see the evidence. Like it's impossible for me to have done any of the things I've done while being broke. It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't add up. So don't don't prove them wrong because what you're going to do is you're going to focus on the haters. Then they got you off track. You got to keep your eyes on the prize because your goal is not to prove them wrong. Your goal is to make uh, two million dollars this year. Your goal is not to prove a hater wrong. Your goal is to buy a new pr a beachfront property in the Bahamas. Your goal is not to prove them wrong. Your goal is to put more money in your account in the Caribbean and your account in Central America. That's what your goal is too. You feel me? Uh, Terrence sends intuition, writes peace to the saints. John writes peace to the saints. First time sending tuition. Wow. Shout out. And I commend you for doing something different. It is when we do things that are different, we get different outcomes. I picked up judo earlier this year, loving it. Should I pick up a striking art like Muay Thai or boxing as well? I would, I would, I would. But I also, you know, if you're enjoying judo and that's something you want to go into deeper, do it. Do it. I mean, at a certain level, you don't want to spread yourself too thin, right? So... It's nice to be a master of something. The same rights. I know I'm not going to the win. I feel you on that one. And I appreciate the solidarity. And that's where we find strength is solidarity. Steam Roland shared the link to the black box, which you can get on Amazon. John writes, oh, got that one. Victor writes, I had a horrendous first date with a coworker. She asked me out. It get like that. She's been awkward and avoiding me like the plague since the incident. How should I handle the situation? Stop dating coworkers. And I'm not asking, answering the question you asked. I'm answering the root question, which is how do you not do that in the future? Because you're going to continue living. You're going to continue having these kinds of opportunities. Don't date coworkers that you have to deal with on a daily basis in a parallel function. It's not a good idea is what you've discovered. Uh, and in as much as you're not doing that, you're putting the money before the honey. That's the key. Don't put the honey before the money. You did. Cole writes, black box just came in, peace of the saints. And you will enjoy that. Lon writes, the drive for sex has led many intelligent men to their ruin. The saint in the center. Indeed. And that is a quotation from the black box. That was very timely. The Level Up Podcast for Men writes, damn you spitting. My name is Robert Dunn, Jr. Peace to the saints. Peace to the saints. Pleasure to make your acquaintance, saint. Oh, and he's back. Oh, he said that twice. He meant that. You did. 
Nilfani writes, showing love, sending tuition. I had the pleasure of meeting this saint at the last conference. He writes, been on some real playerism and peace shit lately. Truly grateful and thankful for the game, knowledge, and wisdom. Quote, I'm not perfect, just doing my best to make life worth it. End quote. You did. I feel you on that one. All right, let me see what we got. Uh, do send in your thoughts, questions, comments right now. Uh, Jamie came in by a cash app. He writes, thoughts on World War Three." advice peace to the saints this is a question that is irrelevant in most of our lives because number one if world war three does pop off are you going to lead it no are you going to fight in it probably not so it's irrelevant and the worst thing a human being can do especially a man is concern themselves with things that are presently irrelevant you should be able to anticipate this is not something you're going to need to anticipate because it probably is not going to happen and I'm making a prediction right now and saying it's 100% not going to happen. If it were, I would have already made a video on it because of the commentators of politics, I have the foremost insight on geopolitics that you're going to see on the internet. And World War III is not going to happen. Uh, thank you for that question, though. I know some other people might have had the same question. Romario well, Dixon writes, Peace to the Saints. Hope you are well, Marquette. I am well, and we are all well. And I thank you for sharing that. And it's also a great reminder that we are well. Sometimes we get into this mode where we want to emote and, you know, tell people how we're doing about our challenges and how you don't feel good as you should. Nah, speak goodness and let that reinforce the goodness, even if you don't currently have it. Tomoki sends in tuition by a cash app. He writes tuition from Afex. Forgot about the Google tax. I feel you, Saint. And honestly, I don't want to put a penny in the pockets of my enemies. And the master Sun Tzu states, a peck, a peck of enemy provisions is worth a thousand carried from home. I repeat, quote, a peck from enemy provisions is worth a thousand carried from home. This is what it means. A peck meaning a nibble at enemy provisions, provisions meaning food, meaning if you can eat your enemy's food, it's worth a thousand pieces of food that you carry from your home country. So it's better to take away their food, especially if you can nourish yourself with it, which is to say, do not feed your enemies and do not allow them to feed themselves. That being sending super chats, Google stealing 30%. So if you come in by a cash app or PayPal, it's a better way. I understand that some people due to your country, you cannot do that. Uh, but those who can should come in by a cash app or PayPal. Auzi sends intuition. I want to acknowledge Constantine, who just got the black box on ebook at marquetism.com. I want to also acknowledge Jordan, who just became a, a member of this thing of ours at patreon.com slash the saint and the center. We always have great exclusive content there. I want to acknowledge Sherlock Stoner. He writes, still trying to get a membership, waiting for the reply, peace to the saints. Okay, let me see. Just in a message. Hey there, Sherlock Stoner says he's trying to get a membership and he needs a reply. Can you check for an email from him and send a reply. If you can't find one, just go ahead and cook one up to Sherlock Stoner. Thank you. Okay, just sent that voice memo out to the team. We'll get that taken care of, Saint. Robert writes, Peace of the Saints, taking notes. Indeed, Xavier sends intuition. L99 writes, how can I tell women I like their feet? I would just uh, tell them. It's a pretty straightforward and simple thing. I want to acknowledge Eric, who just got himself a jab journal. We also have JC. And JC, uh, one of our European saints, just became a member at patreon.com slash the saint and the center. And oh, another great thing that I want you guys to be aware of uh, that you have access to as a member at patreon.com slash the Saint in the Center is that um, on the first Monday of each month, we've been having a meeting. All the saints get on. Everyone's on, on the video call 
And, you know, we, we talk through whatever you want to talk through. Guys, some guys ask about stocks. Some ask about relationships. Some ask about business. Some are currently working on businesses. They already had a consultation. They have a quick question. So I'm on there. I'll answer your questions. But most importantly, you guys are on there. And so it's a great place to link up face to face, make connections, network and all that good stuff. So I encourage you to uh, utilize that. And also, I want to make you aware. I know a lot of people who are not members didn't know that we do that. I also want to acknowledge Austin, who comes in by a cash app. And I want to acknowledge Sergio, who just got the black box. You will enjoy it. Do let me know what you think. I want to acknowledge Trey, who writes so much game in this video. Much appreciated. It is truly a pleasure. And, you know, I've been holding in a lot of game. I'm just glad I'm able to kick it out right now. Uh, on this morning, it started early, woke it up, woke up with it in me. Saeed comes in with tuition. Will writes, peace to the saints. Saeed gives some good advice. He writes, like, subscribe, and spread the ism you dig. When acknowledge Dante, and Dante actually has the backpack briefcase. He tagged us in his uh, IG story. You did, we had to repost it. I always repost your IG stories uh, when you tag me. And the backpack briefcase is so gorgeous, man. It's so gorgeous. Um, even one of the ladies on the podcast has one now because, you know, it, it it can go either way, but it's so playerific. It's such high quality. People want to get it. So if you're a big boss, uh, you can get yourself a backpack briefcase at, I think they're at marquettism.com or manandwomanbrand.com, spelled out manandwomanbrand.com. I think the link is in the description. Raphael writes, in re regards to the other saint, it's wise to have one grappling and one striking art. Ronda Rousey versus Holly Holmes is when is what happens when judo doesn't work. Grappling, striking, striking, cardio are keys to success. Piece of the Saints. There you go. And one thing I will acknowledge that as one who is into boxing, I often, you know, really am interested to do some MMA. I just don't like rolling around in little shorts with other dudes, but I know that it, it's such a necessary skill. And what I really like uh, about and admire about the MMA game is that MMA, especially if you're a smaller male or a female, if you really have your Brazil, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu down, you can, once you hit that ground, you can take over a person who's bigger than you, no problem, because the skill is tremendous. Whereas in boxing, you know, if there's a major size difference, you're going to be at a great disadvantage. Whereas once you hit the ground and you're doing the wrestling, grappling and all this good stuff, the size difference is not such an issue, except that the weight is a challenge sometimes. Rex writes, Peace of the Saints watched your content a week ago and you've made me change my way of thinking. All this RP talk seemed a bit much. Indeed, your lectures are inspiring and informative. Appreciate the ism. Also, I purchased the black box last night. You will enjoy it. And do let me know what you think. It took me 10 years to write it. It is a true story uh, of which there are so few true stories today. And I do want to uh, encourage all of you guys, anytime you hear someone speak haterade, you know, they spray out the haterade, say, do you know who Marquette Devon Burton is? Have you ever met him? And if you've not met him, have you read his book? It's a whole testament of his life. And you can Google everything that's in there. There is nothing to say. But but ask him, like, where is your testament to the world? Like, what is your autobiography called? And where can I find you on the news? And who are you? Who are you to speak of him? You see, there are just certain things that don't make sense. There was a time when there this basketball player, O.J. Mayo, he's like one of the best basketball players in high school. He encountered Michael Jordan and uh, they played a game and Jordan destroyed him. And then Jordan afterwards said, hey, look, you might be the best high school basketball player, but I'm the best basketball player in the world. Different levels. You shouldn't even speak on me. And that's real. You heard me? Have some humility. Let's talk on that, which is on our level which is to say that you don't hear me talking greasy about Elon Musk. That's not my level. I should respectfully just be silent. You dig. And similarly, I don't want people who are not on my level speaking up on me. You dig. So chin check them for the big homie. I want to acknowledge Larry Johnson. He writes by cash app. First time tuition. Appreciate all the game. Well, thank you very much. I encourage you to continue doing new things. May we all do new things. Enormous fans. They're enormous fans. I got a little bit more game for you, Saints. Let me grab my notes. 
Send in your thoughts, questions, comments now. Ah, so much game, so much game. You know what? One of these fake YouTubers, they would kill to get my notebook. They would kill. They'd kill to have my notebook. <laughs> because most of what they say to you is just things they heard me say or things they heard a real player say. I mean, the thing that's perplexing is you can look at them and tell they don't get women. So how do they even know what they're talking about? They don't. Carry on. One of the dark truths I want you to understand about the female, the human female, is that paradoxically, females, though they are self-conscious, they are not self-aware. I'm going to say that one more time. Females are self-conscious, but not self-aware. Self-conscious, meaning that they look in the mirror and they might not see beauty, or they look in the mirror and they ignore the beauty and they see all of the imperfections. It is the female mind that does the following. And one of the saints pointed this out one time. I was in one of my uh, suites and we're looking out the window and there's a beautiful view. And the young lady there says, oh, they, they need to clean these windows. We're looking out at one of the most gorgeous and iconic landscapes in the world, the Las Vegas Strip in all its splendor, in the night, lights shining and sparkling, people moving about, gorgeous view from the 63rd floor. And instead of seeing the view, she says they need to clean these windows. And that is the female mind. Detail-oriented, very critical always seeing imperfection, always seeing that which is missing. She missed the whole damn view and was looking at the specks of dirt or dust or whatever dried rain on the windows. That is the female brain, which is to say they're self-conscious, meaning they're so conscious of, oh, I got to pluck my eyebrows. I got to get lip fillers. I got to get breast implants. My butt needs it. My butt's too droopy. All this weird stuff. They're self-conscious but they're not self-aware. So even though they're conscious of all the bad things, they're still not aware, not aware of who they really are, not aware of how they think, not aware of you know, how they're conducting themselves. So they don't have the proper awareness that would allow them to engage in true self-improvement. They don't have the, the self-awareness that would allow them to see that the man they want looks at them and sees that she's too promiscuous or she smokes cigarettes or she drinks alcohol. They're not aware of these things that they're doing that are sabotaging them in getting what they really want. So that's the way women perplex us is that you're like, damn, like you're so detail oriented on all this BS. Should I pluck my eyebrows? But you're not thinking, should I stop drinking alcohol? Because the guy that I'm interested in doesn't drink alcohol and it'd probably make it easier for me to get closer to him. So that's the paradox of the female brain. And in understanding that paradox, a wise man is able to better deal with the female because he knows what to expect. And in knowing what to expect, you can anticipate and in anticipating, you can dominate. And the issue is when males do not understand females and we project, we expect them to be logical like us. We expect them to do the moral thing that we might do or to prioritize in the way that a man prioritizes. You see, women might prioritize shopping, whereas a man might prioritize working. Why? Because women might not ever have to work. That might not even be a part of their life. They might find a guy who's going to let them be a stay-at-home mom. So working doesn't ever need to be a priority, so they don't need to practice it. They don't need to get conditioned for that. Conversely, a male does need to prioritize working because you will be working until the very end, my friend. So you must prioritize that. And so we have to understand why we have different priorities. Our priority is making the money. Their priority might be spending the money because they'll never need to be a money maker. And they're not judged in the society based on being a money maker. 
So when you can accept that reality, which is a masculine thing to do, to accept reality, no matter how ugly it is, and then operate and thrive based on your ability to accept it, you will be a powerful man. And it is very rare that men can do that. And that is why so few of us reach the apex. And that is why I'm here to preach this good message so that you have the ability to move based on this knowledge that you didn't have to gain through experience. Because I'm talking to you largely based on that which I gained through experience. And you know what's better than experience is being able to read it or hear it and get to work. You don't want to have to experience the trauma or the challenge that gave me the knowledge. You just get in the game. Question is, will you use it? Will you play in the game like a champion? Christopher comes in with tuition. Dimitri writes, tuition sending through PayPal slash Cash App for now. Peace to the saints. Much appreciated. It is very wise. Austin writes, ordered samples for soccer socks. That is so good to hear. Austin is one of the saints who is working on building his wealth. He did a consultation, booked it at marquetism.com, and he is making a great product. I don't want to say too much about it. I don't want to let it out. Um, but I definitely need the product and I'm going to buy it. I'm going to be one of your first customers. I'm looking forward to this. Shout out to Daniel Nwosu, writes, peace to the saints. Thank you, Marquette. Comes in by a cash app. And I'm so happy to hear for the saint. The saint has also had a consultation. I, I love hearing from these guys because I know their faces. You know, they're not a screen name to me. They're a real man to me. And Daniel, I really appreciate hearing from because he reminds me of, so many good things and is an inspirational gentleman. And I remember during our consultation, we were talking about gaps in experience. Like, let me tell you what I mean. So where I am today is quite a rare place. You know, very few people get to enjoy the things that I get to enjoy. And I'm thankful, but I was always this person so much of what I teach you is to bring out what is inside of you. I know what's in there. Greatness. Most of us have it, but very few of us will bring it out. And what I was telling Daniel in our consultation, because he's made a great jump. There was a time he was in a very low place and now he's in a high place and he's still going higher. He's a businessman running his own business now. And I said, Daniel, you know, even when you were in that low place, do you realize even then you were also a CEO, but you might not have been aware of it? And many of you sit at home right now as you watch this, you might not know, but right now you are a CEO. Conduct yourself as such. Believe in yourself as such. That's the important thing. So I don't want you to wait until you become a CEO to start addressing people with that level of self-regard. I want you to start now. Always know who you are. Anthony writes, finally, I caught a live first time tuition. Truly appreciate it. Welcome. You are legendary and will go down in history when it's all said and done. I hope you have a dope day and may we all reach prosperity, peace for the saints. I really appreciate that. And may we go down in history and also dominate the future. And I want our way to dominate culture so that the world can be a better place. You dig? I mean, every time I see a lapse in service, if I see a maid that doesn't do a good job in cleaning, I know it's just a cultural thing. You know, it's, it's the pride of work has been gone in our society. Everyone wants to be a YouTuber or a, a Instagram butt model, not realizing every job has value. If you are going to be a maid, be a great maid. I want when I come into a room that you've cleaned, I want to look at that room and it's so clean. I want to be like, who cleaned this room? Who was that? And that's going to be one of our people that does that job, which is remarkable, meaning someone must make a remark about it. They must speak on it because it is extraordinary. It's at a high level. Xavier writes, when it comes to women, appearance is greater than functionality. Yes, yes, I would agree with you on that one, Saint, because it's comical, especially in a place like Las Vegas. If you go out at 1 a.m., you'll see many harlots and uh, thoughts walking around barefoot, holding their heels in their hand. And it's quite a filthy thing, lets you know the nature of the female, that she has such little regard that she would wear uncomfortable shoes knowingly. 
And then once she's gotten to the point where it's unbearable, she's going to walk barefoot on one of the filthiest grounds on the planet Earth because there's such high tourist traffic. People are stepping this filth all over the place. You're barefoot there like the goddamn Flintstones. It's disgusting. Michael's life cycle writes, message the woman to get out through her message a woman to go out through her business email. Only contact I had. Is this weird or does this not matter as long as I shot the shot piece of the saints? Well, if she's involved in your business sphere and your business activities, well, this would be a bit messy. But if you two don't have any business dealings or business connections, shoot that goddamn shot. But let me tell you this, Michael, if you encountered her face to face in person and you didn't shoot the shot and then you followed up on email, that's not player. You need to shoot that shot in person. You did. The saint writes, what kind of watch are you wearing? You dig? I'm wearing a one of one. You dig? We got a black face. Call it a little boosie. You dig? Um, this one is a minimalist piece that I put together. I will show you this one. I'm actually thinking about producing the gold one that I have. And uh, I want to do just 100 units, but I'm only going to do it if I can pre-sell all, all 100 units out before we make it. You see, this is a minimalist piece. Let me, ah, there we get, wait. wait. There we go. It's a minimalist piece. I don't even have a, it doesn't even have a seconds hand on it. There's literally just the minutes hand and there's just the uh, hour hand. There are no numbers, just three Roman numerals. And then there's uh, diamonds for the other numbers that are not present. Ultra minimalist piece. You know, I don't bust down watches. I don't ice them out because, you know, I grew up looking at a watch as uh, something that businessmen wear. And so I don't ice mine out. You hear me? I might wear a little something right here on the neck, but I don't ice the watches out. I keep the watches chill. And I took the, the seconds hand off. So when people look at it, they're like, well, where's the seconds hand? I'm like, exactly. Number one, nobody uses the seconds hand. There's no utility. And number two, that's just another verification that it's a handmade masterpiece, one of one, one and done, none before, none to come. Ballerific. Get it. But yeah, Saints, I'm thinking about doing the gold on gold with the canary diamonds in it. If you're interested, let me know. I'll probably should take a poll because I do want to um, pre-order them, but it'll be a couple months out because they're going to be handmade. Dimitri writes, peace to the saints. Aaron writes, that's a fine ass piece. Appreciate it, saint. Ray writes, woman I really like threatens to leave unless I commit and cut off other women. Bad move or she is a high quality woman, but so are other women. You know, I don't like to respond to threats, you know, and just like uh, you hear a lot of the presidents say, we don't negotiate with terrorists, which is to say when you start negotiating with terrorists, that means you're legitimizing what they're doing. You're basically saying, OK, you created enough terror that I'm willing to talk to you and reason with you and give in to your demands because you've created terror. What is terror? Extreme fear. Nah, I'm not with that. You feel me? For me, if she has uh, all these demands, I don't think I like that. That's going to like, that's going to make me give her the snowman shoulder. You dig? And usually you're going to find people are going to put demands on you when they find you to be weak. Like, for example, if you look at that video with um, Matthew, the dude at that uh, resort, he ran up on us all aggressive. And that's because he looked at us and he saw like two average black guys. And, he, and when you see a black guy, you're usually thinking he's broke and he's unintelligent and uneducated and he's nobody. So you can you can do what you want to do to him because they can't do anything back except exercise physical violence. And he thought, well, I'm in this nice institution. I got some security here. He's not going to do anything physical, which is not true. If it calls for that, out of boo bapting, you dig? Not an issue. I got a clean record. You know, judge will do this and my lawyer will beat the case like a bad child. You know, if it called for it, it, it could go that way, but it didn't need to go that way. But here's the thing. He was trying to be aggressive because he perceived us in a weak position. Now on the back end, you heard me, he figured out who's in the strong position. You dig? But with a female, she's only going to come at you with ultimatums when she thinks you're in a weak position. So I wouldn't let that fly. I want to talk to you all. Okay, here we go. 
Sean writes, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He writes, when will we get more info on the conference? When I have it. Right now, what we're doing is organizing the sessions. And the reason we have to organize them in a particular way, because a lot of it is business. And you have to get into details to get things done in business. And truth be told, some of these details are not exciting. They're useful, but they're not exciting. And then on the technology stuff, we're talking about bleeding edge stuff, NFTs and metaverse and mana and tokens and all this stuff is really complex. And so I'm trying to organize it so that we'll have a session about something like really complex that's not the most fascinating and engaging. And then we'll have a conversation that's highly engaging and fascinating. We're talking women, we're talking game, we're talking relationships. And so we're trying to chop it up and get everything out. So all of my experts who are coming in right now, they're sending in their final slides. And so you'll get that then. Screeches, right? Sending tuition, a piece of the saints. Did you send the spreadsheet to Google Sheets? Freight forwarder, I've been looking for it. Yes, it's on Google Sheets that you got it. I already shared it with you. I know for sure because I distinctly remember doing it. I was going to email you, then I just shared the Google document instead. Um, I'll do it again right now. Got the document here. It's called 2022 Freight Forwarding Companies. I'll share that with you right now. Also, uh, to Mr. Stoner, let me find your email, I think. Mr. Stoner, um, my team followed up. They did email you, so do look out for that. So I'm sharing this with the Screeches Gmail again, and this one is I'm sharing a different version of it right now, just because this is easier to do right now. So go ahead and check your email. You should see that. Okay. Carry on. Yeah, Trevor is right. Go ahead, get them likes up. You did, because the game is flowing. Okay. I just got approved, I think, to sell on Amazon again. I haven't been selling on Amazon in a while. We finished our review of your account. You may now sell on Amazon. Okay. And the reason I did that is because one of the things we're going through in the conference is um, Amazon FBA. And anytime I teach you something, I want it to be so practical. So even if I don't currently do it, I'll go back through it so I can show you every screenshot, tell you every step, because I really want you to be able to do it. That's the key. And when I teach you game, I'm not teaching you game to have knowledge. I'm teaching you game so you can go out and crack you a female. You dig. And I'm also teaching you mindset. So when you go out and try to crack a female, if it doesn't go right, it's not an issue because it get like that. That's how it happened. That's a part of the game. The game is not about winning 100% of the time. It doesn't work like that. And that's how I know a lot of these PUAs and dating coaches are phony. Because there was one who will remain nameless. He was on a live session. He said he's going to go crack a female. And then he was scared and never did it. Um, I'm not going to name his name, but it's like those are the people that some folks follow. I think it's just bananas. Eddie writes, first time sending tuition. Asked an attractive woman yesterday, but said she had a boyfriend. But wasn't with him huh yeah i mean hey here's the thing if a female is not rebuffing you or keeping you away or at bay then carry on if you choose know that those might be murky waters but carry on if you choose for you don't know her boyfriend or man or the guy she's in an entanglement with that's her responsibility to protect his interests not yours because you don't know him unless he's a saint then that's a different thing but i say carry on world era economics writes i find it often in my light years excuse me i find often i'm light years ahead of my goals in preparation what other aspects should i pay attention to Well, if you're light years ahead of your goals in preparation, you should have already achieved them or you have goals that are not big enough. So I would find goals that are more ambitious. Trevor writes, shout out to the other Trevor, peace to the saints. Uh, Jordan writes, peace to the saints, best way to keep a player when you got to share combat sports spaces with your shorty's ex. Oh, that's that's a little weird. But hey, here's the thing. Every time I go into a situation, I'm always asking myself, whether it's business, social or otherwise, is like, you know, how can we make friends? I never go into a situation trying to poke my chest out and be the alpha male because it is what it is. You know, over time, we're going to get this sorted out. We're going to figure out who's here and who's here over time. 
So I don't have to come in here and poke my chest out. What I do want to come in here and do is keep it player, keep it friendly. You dig? And if you don't currently have a problem just because you slay the same female, that's not a problem. In fact, that's a commonality. And so I would, you know, introduce myself, be friendly. And if we can keep it all peaceful, let it be love. And if it can't be love, then let it be that. Joshua writes, hey, Mark, but I'm trying to, quote, hook up with a single mother. Uh oh. <laughs> Any advice on how to go about selling a woman a dream without coming off as a weirdo? I gauge her interest level in me as a five, five out of 10. That's not very high. I probably wouldn't waste much time with this because if A, she's a single mother, uh, there's not much mileage you're going to get out of that. And two, if her interest is a five out of 10, that's pretty low. Uh, you could convert it. There's no doubt about it. But it's like if the interest is already low, why not find a girl who's attractive and single and has no kids and her interest is a five and let's invest our time and energy there. The challenge is that we often try the easy thing. And the easy thing leaves us weak. The easy thing makes us miss our goal. Don't do that. Now, if you said that the situation where she's a single mother, hella thick, and the interest is at eight, well, then I say, let's, let's, let's function here. But why work hard for a small prize? Why work hard for a small prize? If we're going to work hard, let's get a big prize. You dig? Oh, you foul. <laughs> you foul. He writes, you're already a weirdo for wanting that used box. You did. Uh, Says, let's keep it saintly out here. You know, there's no need to insult anyone. No need for that. Keep it saintly out yeah. Carrying on. <laughs> and I'm not saying I haven't done any of the things that I'm guiding you away from. I'm not saying that. Often I might guide you away from something because I've done it and I know it's the wrong way. You see, when I say don't use dating apps, I'm not saying I've never used dating apps. I'm saying I know it's the wrong way and I don't do it because it's you're going to encounter women who are extremely promiscuous, women who are mentally ill. So I'm guiding you away from that because I know it's wrong. And I've even in some cases verified that it's wrong. And in other cases, I've not had the experience. I've not had the experience of drinking alcohol or of using drugs or or of being overweight. I've not had the experience of it, but I've for sure observed it enough to know what it is. So I get you might need that in your life, but seek something better in your life. And the things that we pursue reflect how we see ourselves. You see, like when I came to this particular resort and uh, the woman's like, uh, would you like to upgrade? I say, yes, I would like to upgrade to the very best suite you have available. She says, okay, well, you know, we have this one and this one and this one. I was like, why are you giving me options? I said, the very best, whatever the best one is, that's the one. She's like, oh, but it costs this much money. And in my head, I'm wanting, I'm like, I'm annoyed in my head. Cause I'm like, look, I didn't ask you how much it costs. I didn't ask you that. I asked you what's the best one Give me the best one. And I knew she was projecting her situation onto me because in her life, she needs to be price conscious about what she's going to do. So she's trying to get the best her money could buy. I'm trying to get the best that the world has to offer. You did. So she's trying to live in her head instead of trying to get more credit for you and figure out what I'm talking about and get into this ism. But that's OK. I didn't get mad at her because I can't get mad at her for thinking with her brain. But once we got it clear that, hey, love, when I said the best, I mean the best. And that's a reflection of what I want and how I see myself and how I'm moving and pursuing. And for you, if you're moving and pursuing single moms, if it's a layup, go ahead and lay it up. But if she going to say, oh, well, if you need this, I'm going to need you to dunk from the three point line. You got to run, jump from the three point line to dunk this. We ain't trying to put in all that work for this, you know, this. uh single mom. That's not necessary. Robert writes, Quet, how would you deal with a main woman you're interested in that's always talking about her ex? Oh, God. this bit. We all had a brawl like that. I never had a main like that. I tell you that right now. I never had a main like that. That's not a main because either A, she has low IQ, which is often the case. They're just not very intelligent. Or B, she wasn't raised right. Her mom didn't teach her a damn thing. Dad didn't teach her a damn thing. Or three, she's not over him. And that's a bad sign. So that's not a main. 
you need to marginalize her because she's a, a real goofball. That's like common sense not to do that. And here's a, a major clue. Women are better at understanding what's socially acceptable than men. Men are okay being disagreeable. Women usually want everyone to get along and be friends. And that's why they're attuned to the society and those who are around them. If she's not attuned enough to your emotions and attuned to what is appropriate enough to know that it's not smart to talk about her ex in front of you of all people, she's a fool. And I would for sure marginalize her. He writes, I've learned from the ism, always go deep inside her mind, but it could be bothersome. Yeah, bruh, she lost. Especially if she's talking about her ex and you ain't asking about it. She's just like, nah, she lost. Jabrizi Match, shout out to Jabri. He writes, had a thought with one of my homies. Isn't it crazy how if you can't find a woman who at least a virgin or drug free? Yeah, it's almost like you get both as a package deal. Well, let me reread that. Isn't it crazy how if you can't find a woman who's at least a virgin or drug free, it's almost you get both. That's deep. And what the saint is pointing out is that often you find merit comes together as a package. If the woman doesn't drink and doesn't use drugs, it's more likely she doesn't have bodies, right? If the woman likes to get her swerve on, she likes to have some alcohol. She likes to, you know, hit the blunt. Oh, she probably got a lot of bodies. Yeah. Birds of a feather flock together. And here's another one. Good qualities come together. Bad qualities come together as well. So this is true. And that's a good point. And as much as when you see a woman show certain bad traits, best believe there are other ones lurking underneath that she is currently concealing. So agree, the saint is wise there. And the saint also has enough experience to know you dig. He giving you game from real lived experience. And that's why you guys got to mess with that Saint City podcast, because when you hear Jabri talk, or you hear me talk, we really out here in the game. We function it. Conversely, a lot of these nerds, they don't really spit game. And I know because I've been around these types. One thing I can say about Jabri that I admire, he'll never see a female he want to holla at and not holla at her. Never. Now, if he see her, oh, he's on the job. Same thing with me. I'm going to holla at you. That's why I told you, if your girl follow me on IG, she needs to send me a DM like, hey, Quet, I just want to let you know. So-and-so's my man. Oh, because I might holler if she look right. I might holler. You did. Don't let her like too many of my photos. It's just an annoyance. You did. Carrying on. I want to talk about places not to approach women. Actually, that's not accurate. It's not places not to approach because, hey, if you want her, go get her. The male is a hunter. So I'm not speaking of places not to approach women. I'm speaking of places where your chances of success when approaching a woman are lower. What I mean by this is there are certain environments wherein the female's guard is up much higher. For example, if you were to approach a woman in the club, her guard is up very high. And what's more, she generally is not oriented on what you're oriented on especially if it's, it's at the early part of that night. For example, you're talking to a girl in the club. She just got into Dre's or, or whatever nightclub she want to go to. And she's excited to be there. She wants to hang out with her girl. She wants to have drinks. She wants to dance. She wants to be seen. She wants to go in the VIP section and take selfies and all that good stuff. Being that that's her focus at that moment, you taking her out of the club to get smashed is not a focus. You having conversation in a loud environment is not a focus. So there's really not much you can do to be successful in that particular environment at that time. I've even had situations where I would meet a chick. I'm, I'm, I'm almost never in the club. There's a time I was in VIP, had a, had a section, and some bad chicks came in. I hollered at one of them. It didn't really pop off. And then her friends told her, hey, it's time to go. So they all leave the VIP section. They probably just went to a different VIP section to take more selfies. Anyways, I saw Shorty after the club. Next thing you know, book up, book up, book up, book up. Point being, timing was critical. Timing and environment does matter. I'm not saying don't spit game in certain environments. I'm saying know that there are fertile places to plant seed. You dig. 
So that's something to be conscious of. I actually do have a video on this and it's uh, called How Women View the Bar and the Club. It's for members at patreon.com slash the saint and center. Do check it out. It's going to help set your mindset. Tommy writes, the other day a girl said she is a good girl. Yet she told me she goes out every weekend. Comical because she really thinks I believe. And you know what's even funnier than that, Tommy? Not only does she think that you're going to believe what she says, here's the funnier part. She might even believe what she said. As I said earlier, women might be self-conscious, but they're not self-aware, which is why we often have women on the Saint City podcast. You'll hear them say things like they're looking for a good man, even though they're not a good girl. Or they'll talk about going out every weekend to the club and being on the scene and doing fill in the blank for money. But they still view themselves as a good girl or a worthwhile woman. And that's not the case. They're not self-aware. Mia J writes, I've been watching your channel for a year now. Well, I am a woman and 30. Do you believe women who are over that age and single deserve to be single for the rest of their life? Well, thank you for sending intuition, Mia. And thank you for, or Maya, is that Mia or Maya? Help a brother out. Um, thank you for your question. No one should ever want to be single or suffer being single for their whole life. Human beings are much better in our natural pairing of male and female. The male without the female is imbalanced and the female without the male is imbalanced. Some because they lack merit or because of whatever bad thing has befallen them or because they're wicked, they may be single their whole life. And I'm sure they have an explanation as to why they're single. It's rarely the truth. But I don't think you should be doomed to being single. I think that is a, a bad thing. You should seek to find a good man to lead you. And you should also seek to be worthy of being selected by a good man. And you should go through whatever training and experience is necessary. Ban writes, Peace of the Saints, what are your thoughts on perception as reality when it comes to attraction and seduction? Yes, perception can be reality. But one thing I can tell you that sustains a relationship over time is when things line up. The reason that my assistants or the women around me get so angry when they see people make videos about me hating, they literally get angry and emotional because they know who I really am. And they've watched me over multiple years change people's lives, not only on YouTube, but in real life. They've watched me pay out salaries so people can provide for their families. They've watched me go around the world and give significant philanthropic contributions. They've watched me do so many things and they know I am what I present myself to be. And so when people lie, it really gets them mad because they have actual love for me. Like, yeah, they might work for me, but they also have love for me. And that being the case, I say that to say this. When you say perception is reality, if you're dealing with a woman and you present yourself to be something you're not, eventually she's going to find the reality. And if the reality is not lining up with the image, her respect for you is going to degrade. And when her respect for you degrades, the way she treats you is going to uh, falter. It's not going to be very high quality. So we often get distracted by these charlatans on the internet, tell you fake it till you make it. And some of them have faked it and made it, but they still have this uh, hollowness on the inside because they themselves know that there's no substance on the inside. So you don't want to fake it till you make it. It will never lead you where you want to be. Rob writes, is there any way to tell that your main is lying about her body count. She, I tell you right now, she lying. You ain't even, look, I don't even know who your main is. She lying, period. But it doesn't matter. Like you don't need to be a inspector gadget over here trying to figure out everything that could go wrong or everything that's bad. We don't wanna be on a hunt for things we don't want. One more time. You don't wanna be on a hunt for that which you don't want. He writes, been watching her actions slash habits closely and it matches her low count. Well, then that's good. But something in me thinks she's lying to get my commitment. Well, she probably is lying and she for sure is trying to get your commitment. But here's the thing. If she's someone you've been with for a certain amount of time and you have a sense of who she is, at some point, you just got to trust her. Now, and if you don't trust her, you at least got to behave as though you do trust her. Me, 
I know women are slick and deceitful. Human beings are slick and deceitful. I have women who have never really shown me themselves to be unfaithful or anything other than a reasonably moral person. When they leave, like when they, I still don't trust them just because I've seen a lot and I know what's out there, but I don't treat them like that. I treat them according to their behavior. Don't let your paranoia and your emotion and your fear go away with you. Rudolph writes, Peace of Saints, Mark, but I'm dealing with a woman who in her past has dealt with my cousin. Okay. Taking this woman serious is not an option. Taking this woman serious is not an option. Okay. But she's looking for something serious. How would you say I go about this or should I abort mission? Nah, you know, get what you want out of it and then carry on. And if you're saying you can't take her serious because she's dealt with your cousin, I don't think that's the... F- True. I mean, unless your cousin's a dirt bag and you're like, whoa, you dealt with you dealt with a dirt bag like that. I can't mess with you. But, you know, if it's a situation wherein. You know, she has like some characteristics that are not good and your cousin has verified that. then yeah, you know, do what you're going to do and carry on. Business rights. Is there a way to get a top secret clearance without joining the military? If so, how I would want I want one, but don't want to join the military. Yes, there are ways to get top secret clearance without being in the military. Uh, There are a number of people who are consultants to government um, or advisors to presidents or even advisors to military officials. There are technologists who have clearance. Um, And I can. Yeah. So generally, you have to have significant amounts of skill or insight. You're a geopolitical strategist. Uh, you're involved in the clandestine services, not necessarily as an operative on the government payroll. You're a certain kind of contractor. Uh, yeah, it's, it's very easy. I mean, not very easy, but it, it is doable. I know people who are in this position. Okay. Going to check the cash apps and PayPal. The so saints have come through via cash app and PayPal. Ramsey writes, since intuition, Jalon writes, why is it that when women think you are the perfect man or boyfriend, they withhold sex from you? <laughs> Isn't that funny? Let me address that first part real quick. Number one, the female is very crooked, very crooked. Everything about her is crooked. Everything in her thinking is crooked. With her being crooked, you can't expect things to be straightforward. In fact, the irony is when a woman is straightforward, it scares us as males. It scares us when they're straightforward. Uh, Often when they're straightforward, we tend to call them a whore. Let's be real here, right? You meet a woman and she's straightforward with you and she's like, look, Quet, I want you to take me back to the suite and beat this down. You know what I would do? I ain't taking her back to the suite to beat it down. She didn't just scare me half to death. I'm like, oh man, this girl, this girl probably got an STD or something, or she's too thirsty. I can't mess with it. You hear me? So when they're straightforward, it scares us because it's so rare. That's not in their nature. And because we have some understanding of the female nature, when they're straightforward, it spooks us out. Further, we all know that vagina that has a lot of miles on it has very little value. And in some cases, has very little elasticity. That being the case, When a woman is truly interested in you and she wants to have you for the long term, what she's going to do is pretend to be more righteous and upright than she really is. Oh, she's going to hold that vagina out because what she's trying to do is build up your esteem for her. She's also trying to make sure that you get to know her. Now, here's the funny thing. Oh, yeah. And by the way, when she's waiting you out, (laughs) she's basically saying, "Okay, well, if he's just here to hit and I'm denying the vagina, if he's just here to hit, he's going to dip. If he's not just here to hit and he's actually going to be with me and he's interested in me, he's going to take out the time to get to know me for me, which has some level of truth. But me, the thing I find to be extremely reprehensible and disgusting is when you have a harlot and she's over here trying to pretend as though she's the Virgin Mary when she couldn't be further from that. Broad ain't been a virgin since the fifth grade. Broad been over here passing it out. But now all of a sudden, when you're trying to get a plate, 
she acting like, oh, we got to wait. We got to hold on. Nah, bro, I ain't with all that. So, yeah, it's a cold game. That's how they do. And that's why you just go ahead and pull you abroad off the bench. And if you know she's really a slore and she's pretending as though she's not, you go ahead and beat that down. And when you finally beat it down, then you don't come around. Deuces! And that's what she deserves. In an attempt to make you... Oh, and by the way, I want you to also know, Saints, don't wait for it. If the others ain't waiting for it, you ain't waiting for it. You hear me? If uh, Pookie... Ain't waiting for it. I ain't waiting for it. You heard me? If Chad ain't waiting for it, I ain't waiting for it. I'm the big homie. And you're going to treat me as such. Yeah, don't let them do you like that. Now, it's a difference if she's actually a chaste woman who has been not passing out the vagina constantly. Well, then you can respect it because she's just carrying on the way she's been carrying on. But when she's trying to pull a Jedi mind trick on you, like, nah, broad, you ain't Master Yoda. I promise you that. I'm going to hit you with some real game. So he writes, in an attempt to make you get with them or earn it, always let them know I'm not looking for that and I want other women, then close it off. How do I? How can I be seen as a man they just want to drop the draws for? Well, number one, part of it is circumstantial. So part of it is the environment in which you meet the female. So say you meet the female in a, alcohol uh soaked environment you dig it's like end of the night you at a bar or a club circumstantially you're meeting her at the right time if you just want to get the quick smash in that is a factor then the other factor is if she finds something about you very sexy and irresistible and she's a sexual woman then you're gonna get the smash in and it's all about the experiences that you put that female into and that's some deeper level game. Zachary sends in tuition via PayPal. Peace of the Saints. Had a uh, gave him a consultation a while back. Ishmael writes, Peace to the Saints, first time tuition. Shout out to Ishmael. And as I say, I'm really serious when I congratulate folks for um, doing something differently because I promise you, life is about patterns, whether they're good patterns that you need to maintain and improve or bad patterns that you need to break. And we all get into patterns. Even with myself, I try to break my patterns of being around too many women. I'm not talking about like necessarily like women I'm romantically involved with, even if it's like assistance, they cripple me in some ways. Like I am an introvert, number one, so I got to spend more time alone. Um, but number two, I have to take time away from them because I become so weak and soft because they're doing everything for me. And there are times I go into restaurants that I eat at all the time. And then when the menu comes, I don't even know what to order because I don't even make my own order. You know what I'm saying? And so I realized that I have to take that time alone for myself to make sure that I'm strong and I'm independent and I can get things done. So I say that to recommend to you that you keep sharp and you break patterns that are bad and you create new patterns that are good. And you're able to observe when you're running on repeat in a pattern that's not working for you, a pattern that's not helping you. And sometimes your patterns come in the form of people you spend times with or places you go that cause you to do stupid things, whether it's smoke, drink, gamble, or whatever your vice is. It's a pattern of going to that particular place that causes that behavior. And you need to break that pattern. And you really need to seek radical change. One thing I'm thinking about doing, and I got to figure out the pricing on this, is I want to do like a an immersion, uh, maybe a two night thing that people can sign up for. Like they literally, uh, it's like live like a saint for for two nights, and so it's like a full 48 hour experience. You come, uh, stay at my place, and you know, hopefully you're in the same time zone. If you're in a different time zone, we'll have to do more nights so you can adjust. But come, stay at my place. You're gonna wake up when I wake up. You're going to eat what I eat for breakfast. We're going to go through the day doing what I would do that day. And we're going to do that for two days. We're going to break you radically out of your bad patterns. If your bad pattern is not to exercise, oh, you about to be on my exercise schedule. If your bad pattern is not to wake up early, oh, you about to be waking up at a saintly time. If your bad pattern is not to go to sleep on time, you still might not go to sleep on time because sometimes I'd be lit, but your ass still going to wake up on time. You dig. And we're going to break you out of your pattern in a vicious and unpleasant way. Um, because sometimes that's what people need. And maybe just getting that two night experience could be a radical revelation for you, you know? 
and maybe it might jumpstart something in you. So I'm thinking about doing that. It can be a cool thing. You know, you have home cooked meals. Um, you're going to have some simple living. Like I live like when you see me in suites like this, like I do this to get away uh, from other people. I do this when I want to be alone. I'll come to one of my suites. Um, but when I'm at my house, there's nothing on the walls. All the walls are blank. I'm a minimalist. You, you got all this bullshit here. You feel me? All this bullshit um, here. But in my home, all my walls are blank. They're white. Nothing on them. I throw away. I get awards and throw them shits away. I got trophies. I throw them shits away. Um, so I'm thinking about doing that because I really want you guys to do new things. I'm a believer. Dimitri comes in via PayPal. He writes, paying tuition. Thank you for the game. I ask females for their numbers, but they sometimes prefer slash ask for my Instagram instead. I use Instagram only for your lives. How should I proceed? Yeah, a lot of chicks will play off this like, oh, what's your IG or take down my IG. Sometimes it's a curb and sometimes that's just really how they communicate. You know, sometimes that's their main DM and they also want to get a chance to know you before they give you the, your uh, their phone number because they don't want you blowing them up. I think it's stupid and thoughtless, but as I said, women are crooked. They don't realize that you can be blown up on IG the same way you can be blown up on a phone number. And then the last piece is women are researchers. So what they really want to do is get your IG and figure out who you are. You dig? And once they get your IG, they're going to research you and, and then decide who you are based on that. So, you know, but I tell you this, if you make an impression in person, by the time you ask for the contact information, it doesn't matter if it's IG or phone number or whatever, they're going to make sure you can get in contact with them. And another thing to note is that women who are interested in you, sometimes they're going to ask you for the contact information. That's always ideal. That's what you really want. You like to flip that script. But here's the thing. Whether it's the IG or the phone number, if they're interested in you, they're going to respond. And that's really all you need to worry about. And understand that as a businessman and as a super player, Say I'm on, I'm going and doing sales, direct sales, and I can tell someone's not going to buy what I'm selling. I don't want to waste any more time talking to them. If they say no, I want to hear it quick. I want you to say no quickly so I can get on to the next prospect who might buy something. If I'm talking to a woman and she doesn't want to mess with me, I want her to curb me quickly. Or if she gives me the phone number or the IG and I DM her and she don't respond and it says seen and she leaves me on unread for 10 hours, I know it's done. Let's get on to the next one. A real hustler, we don't care about a yes or a no because we just trying to get the no's quicker so we can get on to the yes. And the yes don't even matter until we get what we want out the female. You heard me? Whatever that value is that you're seeking from her. Shout out to Vapor saying comes in by a cash app. He writes, I'm down for that. Indeed. Yeah, I think it'll be a good experience. Xavier writes, do you think that consistent pump and dumps? <laughs> Do you think consistent pump and dumps reflect just as poorly on the man? I think that as you age and mature, if you're aging and maturing, in inevitably you're going to age, but sometimes you don't mature. If you age and mature, you're going to have fewer pump and dumps. Like one thing I can promise you that I have noticed that kind of scares me about myself. You know, I'm like, damn, I'm not a savage no more. Man, Quet used to be a savage, boy. Like it used to be that I could um, see a chick be like, damn, she... Thick. And just based on that, I'm a smash. And I can even enjoy the smash. But now I'd be like, oh, she thick. I'm like, oh, this girl's too stupid. Her IQ is too low. I can't do it. Or like, oh, her nails are too long. I'm out. You know, like, oh, the personality ain't there. I can't do it. Or, oh, this girl's weird. Now the other things matter. And I think that's just maturity. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's a, being around a good woman, you know, who knows? But when I was younger, I'm like, okay, yeah, you could get this pipe shorty. But now I'm like, nah, you you ain't going to get this candy muscle, baby. You ain't earned it. So I think that's just a reflection of aging and maturity. I don't want to say it's a good or bad thing. It just might be a necessary part of human development. There are people who, like Gandhi, for example, whom I'm, I don't respect. But Gandhi, I respect him as a great man, but not a good man. I'm, I'm not impressed with Gandhi. Now, I've read his autobiography um, and a lot about him. I'm not impressed. Anyways, Gandhi would promote things like sexual denial 
Well, it's easy to promote sexual sexual denial or semen retention or whatever you want to call it or celibacy or whatever you're calling it. It's easy to promote that when you're old because your sex drive is dead. You know, you're a senior citizen. So I don't find that to be meritorious. Is that even a word? Let's see. Meritorious. That is a word. Okay, great. I don't find that to be meritorious when you don't have sexual de desire because you're old and you're promoting young people to deny themselves sexually. So anyways, I say that to say this. Um, when you're younger, you tend to want to smash more. Hopefully, you're being selective about it as much as possible. You should observe that as you mature as a man, you're less inclined to smash uh, harlots. And if you're not less inclined to smash harlots, that means the ism has not penetrated. That means you're not growing morally. He writes, what I mean is perhaps men fear slash no that eventually their facade will be stomped out. Not entirely uh, sure on what you meant by that, Saint. HF writes, thanks, Marquette, for sharing your knowledge. The main thing I'm yet to understand with the high-level game is how much pursuing of women needs to happen or conversely conveys neediness. Well, the key is to keep it player. You heard me? There's always there's a, a way to do it like a square, and there's a way to do it like a super player. You see... I could pursue a woman with the same consistency that a square pursues her, and she'll look at the square and say he's thirsty, and she'll look at me and just say I'm a super player. You dig? And the reason is the way you – it's not what you do. It's how you do. You, you see what I'm saying? It's not what you do. Well, what am I doing? I'm in a suite in Las Vegas. Well, I have. How, but how is important. There's a lot of people who are in hotels in Las Vegas, but I'm on the top floor in this hotel. I have the view of, you have the view in this hotel. It's the how that matters, which is to say when you deal with her, keep it player. You heard me? Keep it light. Keep it playful. Keep it fun. Don't let it slow up the money. And it's going to be a beautiful thing. They can tell the thirst when it's there. But when the thirst ain't there, when you just, you, you glide and that's a different experience for you and the female. Ban writes, Peace of the Saints, out of curiosity, at what age did you make your first million? Someone actually had asked me that previously. And what was the feeling like? And did your bankers start to treat you differently? Let me tell you guys a secret that you don't, you probably don't know. This will mess me up. The first time I got a tremendous amount of money into my bank account, my bank called me. Uh, it, it was the, the president of the bank personally called me and um uh, had a conversation and told me he was assigning a personal banker to me. I didn't really understand what that meant because I pretty much, you know, you go in the bank and you just somebody in the bank, you know, you go to whatever person they tell you to go to and it is what it is. When you have a personal banker. This is crazy. And you might be like, Marquette, you're lying. No, this is real. Your bank will come to you, which is to say that now I can have my bank come to me, which so you might say you want to make a deposit of cash or you want to make a deposit of a large check. You got to go to your bank. Now, I can call the bank and the bank will come to me like I'm like, oh, hey, um, I'm on the 35th floor feeling such and such. And I'm in sweet, blah, blah, blah. Uh, I want to make a deposit come through or bring me some money or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, they'll come to you. A lot of things you think are rules are not actually rules. A lot of things you've been doing your whole life. That's because you're in a certain situation. But when that money gets serious, shit get different. Like you don't have to go to the bank. The bank can show up to you. That was the first thing that blew my mind. It was funny too because I'm a young black guy. It's like an older white guy showing up like, hey, Mr. Burden, you know, so it's so such an honor to be working with you. You know, I work with all these other guys. And, and then the bank has services that you don't know about. So for example, most of you get a checking account. You might get a money market account. There's like these basic things. But when you have a significant amount of money in the bank, then they start talking to you about services and they want to start giving you financial advising and connecting you with all these different things. And there's also a window you can go to when you do have to show up to the bank, the, a business line or business window at certain banks. Like I got a bank in Puerto Rico, Banco Popular. I got two banks in uh, South Korea. I got a couple other banks in different countries I won't mention. Um, those are just the banks that people know I have. People know I have a bank in Korea and people know I have a bank in Puerto Rico. So I don't mind mentioning it. Now, of course, I have banks in America, but I have a couple of banks in other countries. But um, generally, when you go into those banks, there's a business line. You just go straight to it. Um, so it's a, it's a different feeling. And one thing I'll tell you is like, usually you're dealing with a personal banker. But when you end up in that peon line, for whatever reason, if you just happen to be like 
you want to go into the bank randomly um, and you just go into a random branch. One thing I've actually noticed is either utter shock, like they look at the value and they're like, kind of like, what? Like, it's like they're they're looking twice. They're like, whoa, like, dang, that's real. And I don't even think it's because it's me. I think it's just because of what it is. There's that. And then I had an issue, and I've mentioned this actually before. Um, I had an issue at a U.S. bank branch, and that's a terrible bank. Don't ever use U U.S. bank. I had an issue at a branch on Sahara in uh, Las Vegas. And it was this woman who, I don't know what ethnicity she is, but she clearly was not born and raised in America. Uh, I think she's Middle Eastern. And she looked at my bank balance and then looked at me and all of a sudden was filled with ha hatred and contempt. And she started immediately treating me very badly, which you often think, you know, whoa, you, you're you doing really well financially. People are going to bow down. That's not always the case. There's a lot of jealousy, unfortunately. There's a lot of congratulations, but there's jealousy. This woman gave me such bad service and I was being polite. And I said at the time, I think I was saying $40,000. I wanted to do something. So I was saying $40,000 cash. And she said, I can't give you that much money. I said, absolutely, you can because I... I come, my assistants come, they take out tremendous amounts of money, more than this. Well, I've taken out a quarter of a million dollars in cash in the last like 40 days. You can check, the records are there. You've given me a lot of money. So just wrap up my money to go. And she's like, no, nah, I can't do it. I was like, all right, we'll go get the boss. Long story short, she was so uh, unpleasant and others and her colleagues like tried to get involved in the situation. If you go to that same branch in, on Sahara, the whole staff is new. They cleared out the whole staff. And you might think I'm exaggerating, but you even, if you were on that live where I discussed this, Bridget was like, no, I was there. The whole staff is new. And the reason is I call up my personal banker and I said, hey, I do a lot of business with you guys. This was my experience. Here's a damn near a transcript of what was said. I don't ever expect to have this kind of experience. I will be going back there. And if I go back and this is the experience, I'm taking out all my money. And by the way, I'm in technology. So I do know how to leverage some ads to make sure that I can fuck over your, your local branch, if nothing else. So you need to fix this. And they did fix it. They cleared out that whole goddamn staff. I don't know if they fired them. I don't know if they put them at different places, but they cleared the whole shit out. And I respect it. And the idea was the branch manager, uh, the guy I talked to is that, you know, he said, this comes from leadership, Marquette. So if the leader didn't get this right and they knew what kind of customer you are, we cleared out everybody. We have a new leader there and a new culture. So I, I don't know what happened to the people, but they cleared all the motherfuckers out. And you might say, Marquette, why do you do stuff like that? I don't. I don't do stuff like that. When I went in there, I was polite and respectful and I asked for a basic service. And she was rude and impolite. And one thing I always let you guys know is, if they strike at you, strike back at them. Kill an ant with a sledgehammer. Tico writes, I'm addicted to fentanyl. That's, that's serious. I used to be healthy and an MMA fighter. Now I work and have a family and can't go. To, I wouldn't say you can't go to rehab. Should I book a consultation? Well, let me tell you this. And may everyone be witness to this. May everyone be witness to this. A money hungry person would say, yes, book a consultation, pay me. I'm telling you, you could book a consultation if you want to. But one thing I can guarantee you, a consultation will not get you off of fentanyl in all likelihood. So I am telling you, a consultation with me in all likelihood will not get you off of fentanyl. What I can tell you for certain is that you need to get professional help and you will probably need to get some pharmaceuticals that can help you wean yourself off of fentanyl. And I know fentanyl is a very serious drug. I have a lot of experience in this industry. And fentanyl is something that is often used by those who would use heroin if they could get their hands on it. And it's a more of a synthetic thing. And it is a strong, powerful drug. We both know this. You know it from using it. And I know it from certain experience I have. That being the case, you need professional help. And fentanyl is serious enough and in my opinion, it is on the level of seriousness of heroin that you need to get professional help. And let me tell you this. Sometimes we feel like we can't do things. Three sins Bible. Number one, be yourself. Number two, be good to yourself. Number three, be good to good people. Be good to yourself. That's before you're good to anyone. So it's in order. Be yourself. Be good to yourself. Be good to good people. Saint, you must be good to yourself. Get off of fentanyl. And I don't give a shit if you have to say wife, 
Fuck you. Kids, fuck you. I don't care if you have to say that in the short term because consider this. You're not a good father when you're on fentanyl. I promise you. You're not. You're not the best father you can be. So if in the short term you need to, you know, take a step back at work or take a step back out of the family to get off of fentanyl, do it. Do it. It'll be good for everyone. Uh, if you want to book a consultation with me, I invite you to do that at marquetism.com. I'd be happy to give you a consultation. And I will admit there have been many saints, many more than I can count, who said, Marquette, you got me off of drugs. Marquette, you got me off of alcohol. There might even be a saint right now who got off of drugs. And I do know saints who have gotten off of fentanyl. I do. You are not the only one who's been on fentanyl. And I commend you for being real enough to admit your challenge. Because the first step in improvement is seeing what's real. But I tell you to hyper focus on this and, and get this monkey off your back, Saint. May everyone wish him hyper focus in dealing with this, wish him goodness and, and commend him for his honesty. ZMJ writes, caught the stream on the go. Thanks again. Truly a pleasure. Trevor writes, Marquette, expanding my vocabulary more than my teachers did in school. You dig? <laughs> Xavier writes, the longer you're around a woman, eventually, if you're lying for box or uninteresting, it'll be known. If you leave her as soon as the sex occurs, she can't discover it. That's correct. That's correct. But as men, let us not hide. Yes, go ahead and get them likes up. You dig? We slacking. As men, let us not hide. Let us work on ourselves such that we are proud of ourselves. You'll often hear people who are haters, they'll try to be critical of me and say, Marquette, you're arrogant. I don't believe this to be true. And whether it's true or not, I don't care. One thing I can tell you for sure is that I'm very proud of the man that I am. I wake up early every day. I work my butt off every day. I do good for other people every day. I nourish myself. I am proud of the man I am. And I have no fear of being exposed. For no one can expose me because anything that you would ever point out about me will only point to merit and accomplishment. As men, let us not hide. Let us be great and then be willing to show that. A.T. writes, Peace of the Saints. It's been a minute. A female is more friendly and playful around your friends. Excuse me. If a female is more friendly and playful around your friends, but is more shy and reserved around you, is that a bad thing? By a female, if you're talking about your female... I would say that's something that is curious. Me personally, I definitely judge a woman based on how she interacts with my friends. I expect her to be social, but not too social. I expect her to be cordial, but not very friendly. I expect her to at a level be standoffish because she doesn't need to be in their face. And it is a very clear sign of a harlot uh, when she is being too interested in your friends. And even in your friend's absence, she's asking about them. Say you came and you're hanging out me and you know all the saints you dig your ladies there and then when y'all leave your old lady's like oh hey like you know what what is where's marquette live or what does marquette do for a living like that shit ain't in that's not relevant to you love mind your business you worry about what i'm doing for a living worry about where we live don't worry about what marquette is doing because marquette's not your man so a woman should be able to man mind her own business and know what her business is which is her man Okay, let me just check this voice message real quick, if you don't mind, Saints. It's a scammer. One thing I can promise you is you become successful Oh, people are trying to scam you left and right. It is just extraordinary how many people will try to scam you. Whew. <laughs> but hey, everything has two sides. Nothing is all sweet. Nothing is all sweet. I want to acknowledge uh, Bobby came in by a cash app. He writes, overdue tuition, peace to the saints. Also would like to acknowledge that... I also want to point out another thing. Remind me to talk to you about capital. Oh, shout out to Orion. He, oh, he about to get his drip game on. He went to sassinbrand.com. That's S-A-S-N brand.com. 
he copped him the Saint the Center uh, denim jacket. Now, mind you, that jacket is so cold when I wear the Saint the Center uh, denim jacket. People are always like, oh, Saint the Center, that's dope. Like, I like that. They just like the concept. They don't even know that it's a brand or that it's related to the YouTube channel. They just like the concept. People are like, yo, where'd you get that? Like, sasmbrand.com. They're like, I'm about to cop me one. So it, it's cold. And when you get it in the black with the red lettering, it's just so sexy and so gangster. There's something passionate about the color red, you know? A.T. writes, nah, she ain't my female. Oh, I can dig it. Well, you know, sometimes when you're around a female and then she kind of uh, tightens up around you, that lets you know you have an effect on her. What you should be observing is if there's a group of, you're in a group situation and there's males and females and there's a female who's social with everyone, but a little more anxious and nervous around you, you're having an impact on her. You're looking for the difference in how she interacts with you versus the general public. So yeah, that's a good thing. Also, in looking at my email, people are messaging, offering me business capital, which is to say like loans, essentially. You you never get offered uh, loans when you don't have good credit or if you need money. You're not offered loans. You're offered loans when you don't need loans. You're offered loans for growth in a business. So that's one thing I want you to understand. The nature of the world is that when you need money, you're not offered money. When you have bad credit, you're not offered credit cards or you're not offered money. The world does not respond to what you need. It responds to what you've earned. You see, I'm being offered business credit because my businesses are strong. And so banks are saying based on your business profile, because we know all of your financials, because we can see the money going in and out of the account and the money sitting in the account. We know that there's a strong financial engine in your business. So we want to offer you more capital because their idea is twofold. Number one, that if they give me the money, I'll, they'll get it back because I have capital. And then number two, if they give me the money, I can probably grow my business with it. So I might be able to utilize it because I know business. And that's what I want you guys to understand is that that's how the world works. It doesn't respond to what you need. It responds to what you've earned. I don't give consultations to people who need them. I give consultations to people who pay for them because they've earned the right to have that conversation because we're going to have a high level conversation. I don't want to have a conversation with someone who can't afford it because the things I'm about to teach you are up here. If you can't afford a consultation, you the shit I'm teaching you, you can't even do. You see what I'm saying? Like That's why it costs to go to the conference. It costs to have the consultation because the guys who show up to the conference, we're about to put you on some stuff that's going to take you up here. But for you to get here, you got to at least be here. You know what I'm saying? So I want you men to understand that life is about what you earn, not about what you want, not about what you think you deserve. If you are what you say, you got to show it. So go ahead and get to it, baby. Yes, indeed. Oh, actually, that notification I got, it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Oh, shout out to Luke. Luke has the, the Saint in the Center denim jacket from sasmbrand.com. We actually just sent that out. Just got the notification here. You dig? Go ahead and send in your thoughts, questions, comments. Trevor said, that needs to be on a billboard. You dig? There's so much ism needs to be on a billboard. Aisha writes, I'm liking this video partially just off principle that he's taking the time to be preaching for two plus hours. I done worked out and came back. It's still going. Oh, indeed. And you know, it, it's really off of the, the passion. You don't see me every day on YouTube. Some YouTubers go live twice a day. And they're not even talking about anything relevant. They're gossiping about celebrities, trying to get your super chat, but they're not earning your super chat. I come on live when I have something to tell you. And even though from an experiential and educational standpoint, I have more knowledge than these guys and I could speak extemporaneously better than them. I always come with the notes. I come with things that I've pondered on saying, you know what? The saints need to know this. This knowledge will take them to the next level. And that's why I come here. Since we got the ladies showing up, I want to give uh, some rules for females. And this is not a rule to control you. This is a rule that you should have for yourself. This is a rule that a saint should have for a lady saint. This is a rule that will keep you safe, make your life easier. Do not find yourself in person one-on-one -on -one with a male outside of your immediate family, unless you are romantically interested. Say that one more time. 
Ladies, do not find yourself in person, one-on-one, -on -one, with a male outside of your immediate family unless you're romantically interested. What I'm saying there is if you don't do that, he's not going to get the wrong idea that you're interested because you're never one-on-one -on -one with him. Sometimes when you're one-on-one -on -one with a guy, they get confused and think that it can be something that it's not. That's protecting yourself. Secondly, if you have a man, you shouldn't be alone with another guy one-on-one. -on -one. I don't care what the situation is. Point one of uh, one point one of that item is, quote, never be alone in a private space. Now, notice there's a difference between the first part was one on one. You see, I could be one on one with a woman in the lobby of this resort. That's one on one. We're still in public, but it's one on one. So if we're one on one, she might think I might think she's interested. You see, I might think I can finesse it. Don't be in that situation unless you're romantically interested with that man. You're going to give him uh, some you're going to mislead him or you're going to put yourself in a bad position or you're going to look, you're going to make things look inappropriate because if you have a man and you're one-on-one -on -one with another man, it doesn't look good. Here's point 1.1, 1. 1, ladies. Never be alone in a private space with a male of 13 years old plus unless you're willing to submit to any sexual act he may seek. I'm going to say that one more time. If women follow this, you will never hear of a rape going on again. You will never hear of any of those hashtag me too's going on again. Never be alone in a private space such as this one on one with a male who is 13 years old plus. Why 13 years old? Well, that's the age males usually have hit puberty, which means they trying to smash. And age 13, they're physically developed enough to overcome you as a female. You did. So if a woman's here, my sweet one on one. I'm trying to give her the tour. I'm trying to be like, oh, hey, shorty, you know, uh, come check out this view. Yeah, like check out this little thing. I don't even know what that is. Like, yeah, look at the view. Oh, yeah, let me show you something else, baby. Let me show you something else. Yeah, look at these balls. Yeah, I got some other balls to show you too. But before we show you that, yeah, check this. Uh, my maid didn't come. See, I'm giving y'all this game. I didn't let my maid come in here. I don't see. And the thing is, I'm trying to keep it saintly. I don't even want my maid to be in here while it's just me. If it was me and my assistant, I might let the maid come in. But I'm not going to have the maid in here while it's just me because I ain't trying to have shorty hashtag me to the big homie. You did. But I'm trying to finesse shorty. If it's one on one, I'm trying to bring her over here to the to the red room. You dig? And that's what chicks don't understand when you're one on one with a guy. Given the nature of males, are we trying to finesse? You might be thinking business, he thinking sex. You did. Now, um, we're going to get right back to this game. But you see, I've been kicking game for a while. So I'm going to just set this down real quick because um, I need to use the restroom. But stay tuned for this game, though. Make that as quick as possible. Hey, check this out. Another thing, you know, I don't want fans. I want people to improve their lives. I want them to be more saintly. This is one of my favorite tubs, just from the aesthetic of it. You feel me? It's not my favorite in terms of size, but it's one of my favorite in terms of, I just like the squareness and the minimalist look of that tub. But anyways, I want people to improve their lives and to improve your life, you have to improve the quality of your thinking and improving the quality of your thinking. That's going to eventually impact your actions if you're a serious person. Now, what is bothering me is sometimes I see that people listen to me for a long time, but they're not soaking up any game. And what I mean is this. I heard a cat or I saw a cat make a comment. He wrote, man, this podcast is dope. And, uh, you know, the, the lighting is dope. The women are beautiful. The game is good. 
man, all you need now is a soundboard. Like you need sound effects. And I was just thinking like, bro, you don't understand what we're about out here. Like that's like some little kid shit. I'm not saying we won't ever get it, but at the end of the day for me, it's like some little kid shit that we're not here to like play sound effects for you. It's all game. There's no gimmicks. And that's why only I know only the wise will gravitate to my message because my message is not even fully understood by people who are not wise. Only the wise men and women will gravitate toward what I'm saying. The dude is over here like, Marquette, I want to hear you click sound effects. Ding, ding, ding. I want to hear you click sound effects. Do, 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 do. Like, really? Come on, bro. The difference between me and these guys is they need the sound effects to keep your attention. They need the sound effects to give them time to think because they don't have original ideas. I've even been tempted to do like try to beat my record once I did a five hour stream, just kicking game for five hours. I damn near want to try to do a, a six hour stream, just stay on for six hours, just kick game straight for six hours just to show you I could do it. But I say that to say, I hope you guys are taking seriously the information that I'm imparting to you and realizing that I might talk about women, but I'm always talking about life change. I might talk about women, but I'm always talking about what it is to be a real man. I might talk about heartless, but I'm always giving you information on what it is to be a lady saint. And I hope that you're taking it seriously and implementing it. Baller alert, anonymous professor. Good to hear from you again, saying I haven't seen you in a little while. Writes, peace to the saints, prosperity to you, Marquette, Bridget, and all the saints. I'm on duty, but I want to show a remarkable man my appreciation who is helping society by building stronger persons. Truly a blessing in all aspects. I can't wait for the conference, saying I look forward to it as well. I'm trying to make it as easy a lift on me as possible. It's taken so much time, but the easier lift it can be, for me, the more we can do things like that, because I know being in person is the key. Um, and I hope that everyone who's coming is coming for the information, secondly, and also firstly, to be around the saints. That's the key. Markel writes, hopped in late to wish and truly appreciate it. Baller alert. You did. The lady saint that showed up. Big boss status. <laughs> she said, she said, fellas, get your weight up. The lady's taking lead. She writes, you got all the game. If I was young, I would want to be on your team. Well, baby, hey, it might not be too late for you. Keep playing with it. I appreciate that. And that's a, a very intelligent and experienced position that she speaks from. You know, women who know what this world is about. They've had enough experience. They've dealt with a, enough males who are not real men. When they see a man of value, they know, hey, now let me go ahead and sign up for this program. Robert writes, I'm 39, make six figures, currently dating a 40-year-old who's divorced, no kids, house foreclosed, and is about to file bankruptcy. God damn. That's, woo, bro, you didn't just stacked up like a lot of red flags. I'm, I feel anxious. I don't even want to read the rest of the goddamn super chat. Like I got a knot in my shoulder reading this damn super chat. Goddamn. All right, Robert, I'm going to try to make it through, Saint. He writes, great chemistry with her and may make it long-term relationship. Would you do that? <sighs> Look, I'm going to reread it. He writes, I'm 39. Cool. You're young. Make six figures. You're wealthy currently dating a 40 year old who's divorced um in woman years i wouldn't say she's young but you know what there are greater values than youth divorce ah not a fan of that but it's good that she was married has no kid no kids okay she probably isn't gonna have any now she's 40. her house is foreclosed i'm like why though like when it, if a man has bad credit i can understand maybe he was an entrepreneur Maybe he was pursuing big goals. Maybe he was providing for other people. When a woman has bad credit, I'm like, why? How, Sway? How, Sway? It's just like you were irresponsible. Like, what's wrong with you? When a, when a woman has bad grades, I'm like, what were you doing in school? I just don't get it. Like, I didn't have good grades in high school, but I was thugging. You heard me? Like, I was selling everything you could sell. I was like, I was turned up. Read my book, The Black Box. I was lit. But if a girl didn't have good grades, I'm like, why? Like, what were you doing? Like, were you selling dope? Like, were you doing strong arm robberies? What were you doing that you have bad grades or bad credit? It's weird to me. So I don't feel comfortable. I'm not pleased with this woman. He writes, great chemistry. That's a good thing. But hey, at age 40, I'm sure she knows how to pretend. 
I'm thinking of making a long-term relationship. Would you do that? I mean, right, you know, fill her out, bro. One thing I damn sure wouldn't do is get legally married to her because I already know she knows how to go through the divorce process. There's nothing to her. Uh, I wouldn't get legally married. I guarantee you that one. What I would do is fill her out, give her a little bit of time. But you, what you really need to dig into is why is she uh, have a foreclosed home? That is a problem. Joshua writes, I took a girl on a vacation who had a boyfriend. Oh, God. Oh, God, say it ain't so, Joshua. Joshua, don't do it. I took a girl to vacation who had a boyfriend. Okay, now look. Let me read the whole super chat. We shared a room for five nights. That's a lot of nights. She, I hope she got beat down. And I made a move. She complained later, and it's been a valuable lesson. Bruh, look, number one, a, a big boss dog, every now and then you might say, here, bro, I'm going on vacation. Come through. I get that. I get that, bro. Generally, you don't want to reward them when they ain't earned it, but I get that every now and then. Hey, sure, I'm shooting out to the Canary Islands. Come through, little broad. I understand. Now, if she has a boyfriend, she need to know what it is off rip. And you being a real man, there are certain things you can't tolerate. I tell you what, after night one, if she didn't, you know, hand me them draws, I'd be like, okay, cool. You got to play hard to get your female. I get that. All right, night one, there you go. You got that. You won that one. But night two, if this nut didn't get busted, you heard me like a bad criminal. <laughs> Somebody send that one to me. If this nut didn't get busted like a bad criminal, oh, shit, your boy got bars. I got to drop a new mixtape immediately hold on one second let's <laughs> drop a new tape oh man oh my goodness i'm having too much fun oh my goodness wow anyways let me get back to what we talking about saying so after on night two if this nut didn't get busted like a bad criminal this broad is going straight home. And let me just give you a little bit of game real quick, because if you flying chicks out, you're going to need to know about this right here, this high, high level playerism. Number one, nine out of nine, you see me with a chick, she flew herself out. Nine out of nine. Five out of nine, if you see me with a chick out somewhere, she flew me out too. Five out of nine. Now check this out. If you ever fly a chick out, and it, you do that every now and then. If you fly her out for whatever reason, usually she got to be worth it. She got to be vetted and verified before you be flying her out. That's number one. Don't make that mistake. But I always do it one way, right? So I fly them in one way. And I only do my I book my own ticket one way so that whenever like we want to go, we can go. Or if we want to change the plans, we could go somewhere else. But if she wasn't playing her part and we didn't went to night two and it, it ain't popping off, shorty, kick rocks, go home. And I probably wouldn't even get her flight. Depending on the our rapport and our relationship, I probably wouldn't even get her flight. Like, like, get up out of here. You playing games. Or have your boyfriend get the flight. Since you since you can't get smashed, have your boyfriend get you a flight home. But yeah, bro, she did you dirty. And you really should have did her dirty. And she earned every bit of it. Mitchell, the creator of the Jab Journal, writes, what do you think about interest rates going up because of inflation? That makes perfect sense. That's generally how it goes. Vapor Saint writes, damn, you still lie. Peace of the saints. Oh, man, I'm alive. I'm on the scene like a sex machine. Ray writes, how many women do you manage romantically? Not many. I'm finding two is enough for me. I may even go back to monogamy. Bad idea or no? Well, I mean, if you're considering going back to monogamy, that's in your heart. Do it. I mean, it's much easier. It's much simpler. Yeah. I mean, if you feel comfortable monogamous with a woman, then be monogamous. I mean, it makes your life so much easier. You see, you should do things because they're in you. I don't have multiple women because I think it looks cool. If I have multiple women, I have multiple women because I am the camping. You dig? And that's the only way a peak could live. You know, I don't want to live no other way. Shout out to Keandre. He sent uh, he sent some Bitcoin. Right, piece of the Saints just copped the black box. I appreciate. It. That's actually the first time a Saint has ever sent any Bitcoin. So he sent it to my uh, Cash App. 
That's the first time that's happened. Usually, um, some saints will send uh, will send stock or things like that, which is cool. It's it's fun. It's exciting. And I always like to look at the quality of their stock picks and you know see if it what it does in the short term. Yeah, these spammers are crazy saints. Uh, so I, I want to empower the mods to go ahead and block them as they pop up. Robert writes, foreclosure was because of the divorce. Uh, I don't know if that makes sense, but not the bankruptcy. Yeah. Mind you, everybody has a story. And you know what? The story is rarely the truth and the story is rarely I messed up. That's rarely the story. You know what, saints? I want to be real with you. The reason I call myself the saint and the sinner is because I've done a lot of good things. I've done a lot of things that aren't necessarily good. And it's, it's okay. I feel fine about that, you know? And I'm willing to tell the truth about it. That's why I say the saint and the sinner. I never try to position myself as like a, a Jesus. <laughs> like everything I do is good. I'm not Joel Olstein. You know, I'm not the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. I'm like, I'm not that at all. You dig? So one thing I'm really good at is, of course, acknowledging where I'm strong, but also acknowledging where I've fallen short. And you can never really trust anyone who can't tell you the real. Does divorce mean foreclosure? No, it doesn't. It could if it's a situation of like, hey, I'm in a relationship, the mortgage is 5000 a month, and then we get divorced, and now I can't afford the mortgage, but I got the house. Well, then, yeah, that might lead to, lead to a foreclosure. But at the end of the day, generally, when you're divvying up assets, why didn't you divvy it up appropriately? Or why didn't you put the house on the market for sale so you can sell it and you guys can split the proceeds? So this bro this female is lying. I don't believe her. She also says she had a promiscuous past before the marriage in her early 20s. A lot of them have. It's, it's unfortunate. Shout out to her to, for keeping it real about it. But the challenge is they talk about a promiscuous past, but they rarely talk about the promiscuous present. You dig? And you, if you pay attention on the Saint City podcast, I said that just a couple of nights ago. I said, "How come every chick used to be a thought when she was, you know, filling the blank number of years ago, but they're no longer a thought?" Okay, okay. Not to say people don't change, but how often does the uh, a tiger change its stripes? It's rare, isn't it? Very rare. Business rights got a Netflix and chill sesh with a little shorty on Sunday. Should I text her Saturday night and let her know what's up or make a move in person? Oh, yeah, make the move in person. But one thing you should know is, you know, based on the way the female perceives you, based on the environmental situation you set up, that's going to define what can pop off. Because here's the thing. If you message her in advance and say, hey, you coming through for the beat down, you know, she might say, no, nah, I'm good. Because, as I said, women are crooked, not linear. So even right now, presently, in her mind, she might think, oh, I'm going to go, we're going to watch a movie, we're going to have some food, and then I'm going to go home. She might literally be thinking that. And then she might get there, you might have some food, pop the movie on, and next thing you know, you smashing her, doing the Dougie, you know, what's my name? What's my name? Say peace to the saints. Say peace to the saints. You know, that might pop off. But she might not have realized that in advance. You might have made that happen. You did. So you got to give her a chance to come and get under your spell, because one thing you should know, whether it's with females or in business, is that in-person negotiation is far more effective than remote negotiation. So you're going to get farther by getting it done in person. You did. And hey, if you don't value this woman globally, then once you get her in the place to be and she shows you that she's not willing to walk down the path you're trying to lead her down, then tell her, hey, baby, if we can't get right, then you're going to get left. Kick rocks. And it's OK. Sometimes that's the best thing to do is tell them to dip. And one thing I really appreciate about my life right now is that you see, like, say I got a chick right here in this suite and she not with the shits. I could I nine out of nine. I just tell her to dip, you know, and if for some reason I don't have the heart to tell her to dip, <laughs> I'll dip. <laughs> you dig? I just go to a different place and sleep there. You heard me? And like this spot, I don't even have a toothbrush here. I'm kind of annoyed that I don't have a toothbrush here because usually all the spots got like a whole manicure set. But this one, you know, it, it for some reason, I don't have a toothbrush here. But all the same, yeah, man, good luck. <laughs> Jamal writes, got caught with work. Look back at YouTube and Marquette is still live. Oh, I'm going in today. Got to rewatch the live. Probably going to have some more questions for the next live. Oh, indeed. Lots of game here. 
Sergio writes, my name is Sergio Terron. Name will be known. Peace to the saints. Oh, indeed. That's a clean name, too. I like that. Very strong name. I want to acknowledge Mitchell came in by a PayPal sent intuition. I was very smart because the Google Corporation doesn't get to suck out 30 percent to continue their whole machine of censoring the truth. Mitchell came right back. He writes, Peace of the Saints, there are only three black assassin sunglasses left. Thank you for putting, for sharing your prosperity with the saints and creating this community. It is truly something special. I appreciate that, Mitchell. And I know Mitchell really understands what we're doing in our greater vision within the assassin. And as he said, there are only three pairs of uh, assassin sunglasses left. Better get you some. I got a couple pair, you dig? I wear them all the time. I even wear them on the Saint City podcast sometimes. Black Bond 007 writes, big thanks to all your valuable content, brother. I appreciate that. Shout out to the Saints in Canada. We deep in Canada. We also deep in, in the UK, bruv. In fact, I was, uh, you know, Shorty was just telling me because I got to go handle some business in the, the nation's capital next month. And she's like, you know, uh, do you want to shoot over to Europe? She's like, I could, I could book it. I was like, this is interesting. This We might have to do that. And she's like, yeah, she's like, you know, they love you in the UK. I was like, we might have to pull up out there then, you know? How's the weather? Marshawn writes, peace to the saints, Marquette, sir. Tell us a story, big bro. <laughs> I got stories, a lot of them. I can't tell. If you really like stories, I got at least 12, 13 player stories on the uh, on patreon.com slash the St. Center patreon.com slash the St. Center. It might be linked below, but a lot of the stories that you want to hear the most, I just can't say in public because, you know, I don't, I don't want to offend anyone or put their business out there. Even though I'm not saying their name, they still feel like they don't want the story told. I, and I, I get that. Ray, Rakeley writes, had to switch accounts. This is Dax Hill. I think the mods have my super chats blocked. What? Sorry to hear that. Go to the Messiah tier. Go to the Messiah tier, finishing around 2020 content. Amazing. Oh, God, I think you meant got the Messiah tier. Shout out. How do I go about setting up that consultation? Peace of the Saints. Very easily, just email support at marquetism.com and we will get you scheduled. And uh, congratulations. Welcome to this thing of ours. Thank you for coming in at a high level. Rising Star writes, how does one become wealthy and get out of poverty? Is it possible to become wealthy in less than two years? Is it possible to become wealthy in less than two months? It's possible. You ask me what's possible. It is improbable to become wealthy in two months. It is reasonable to become wealthy within two years. Absolutely. Especially if you get good advice that will accelerate it. How does one become wealthy? One does not become wealthy. How does Marquette become wealthy? There's a particular path of things that are possible for Marquette. How does Rising Star become wealthy? There's a particular path of things that are possible for Rising Star. That being the case, you would probably want to schedule a consultation so that we can talk about you. The problem is that so often we're not talking about ourselves. We're talking about one. <laughs> nah, you need to talk about the one, which is you. I want to acknowledge Keandre, as I said, came through uh, via Cash App. Oscar sent in tuition, writes, thank you, sir. And Craig comes in via Cash App. He writes, tuition. Okay. <laughs> Alex writes, why can't I send a super chat? I, I don't know, Alex. Um, but if you're for some reason unable to send a super chat, the PayPal as well as the Cash App information is in the uh, description. I'd be happy to uh, read your question. Trevor said, go ahead, get them likes up. This is one of the most epic streams you, you'd ever want to hear. And I, I tend to agree with him. Let me grab my notes real quick. It's a little bit more game I might share with you. And I am going to formalize these rules for females and they're rules that both the male and the female uh, should be aware of. And they're not to control the female. They're actually to keep the female safe 
and protected and make your relations much easier and simpler. You see, if as a female, you never find yourself alone one-on-one -on -one with a man or even just one-on-one -on -one in the public with another man, you'll never be victim of rumor. You'll never have to explain yourself to your man. It just keeps things simple and easy. And in our relationships, especially our romantic relationships, we should really seek to have a situation where there is flow. We don't want to get hung up on the small thing. You want to make a female go through tryouts, even if you're pursuing her. That's something that's ultra playerific because a player is always trying to flip the dynamic and especially make sure that he's in the leadership position within any dynamic. The square is just taking the world as it comes, you know, eating what was served to him. Whereas a super P is like, nah, this is beneath me. I'm going to need that caviar, dear. So I say that to say this, yes, as a man, you're a hunter, you're the pursuer often. You're the cat, she's the mouse. And while you're pursuing the female, at some level, she may be you know, rebuffing you or she may be playing hard to get, or she may be trying to put you through trial to make you earn it. But the truth is that if you're a real P, you're going to put her through trials, even while you're pursuing her, you're still making her go through trials and prove that she's worthy of you. And that's a higher level of thinking. And that really changes the psychological dy dynamic between the two of you to where she's never pedestalized. Let me make sure that's a word. Pedestalized. And the reason you don't want her to feel pedestalized, if that's what ped is, okay, the reason you don't want to pedestalize, there we go, that's the word, is because when you put the woman up on that position of leadership, it's A, somewhere she doesn't deserve to be, and then B, you position yourself as the follower, which is not correct. And when you fail to make her meet your standards, it suggests that you have no standards. And when you fail to make her feel as though she's earning your affection and earning your love and earning your favor, if she doesn't have to earn it and you give it freely, then it has no value because that which is given freely, often we don't value. We don't pay for things when we don't find them to be valuable. And that's why you always have to charge a price. And that's in life in general and with women in particular. And it is said that the game is to be sold, not told. And that's a wise saying from a P, you dig, has great meaning. And those who see value, they will pay. And those who really appreciate, they will pay. And if the woman doesn't want to pay the price that you're charging, that means she doesn't see the value there. There's a number of folks who are haters. Their whole YouTube channel is about Marquette Devon Burton. And when they go on their channel and they give their their ramblings to the 30 people who are willing to listen to them because they have their stands. They always talk about how they never get super chats and how they don't want them and they don't expect people to send money. And I'm like, no, no, it's not that you don't want them because you do want them. It's that you know you don't deserve them and you haven't earned them. You're not saying anything of value because no one's really going to pay you to talk about Marquette Devon Burton in a negative light. No one's going to pay you for that. So people pay for that which they value. And if the woman values you, she's going to pay the price that you ask. If the market values you, they're going to pay the price that you ask. So always remember that. And an easy way to tell the people really mess with you is not what they say. It's what they do and if they pay. Huh? Everyone says a lot. You know how much words cost? They cost nothing. We all have words. When people sacrifice and they contribute. Make that woman sacrifice and contribute. Tyree writes, peace to the saints. Opportunities multiply as they are seized. In the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Master Sun Tzu, this is true. And in fact, the greatest men in world history made their name during times of chaos when the world or their society was looking for a leader. Napoleon Bonaparte made his way during the French Revolution. Adolf Hitler made his way from German poverty after their defeat in World War I. A lot of great men have come out of nowhere and found a spotlight because they stepped into chaos and created order. Xavier writes, going in today, I appreciate the game. 
You did. Brother P. Dat. Peace to the Saints. He writes, peace to Marquette from Patrick P. Dat in Cincinnati. Not the good pleasure of meeting Brother P. Dat in Cincinnati face to face. Long time ago, he had organized a, a group for young professionals. At the time, I'd opened the business office in Cincinnati. He writes, for continued excellence, the saint with the divorced formerly promiscuous woman on the brink of financial ruin. Damn, when you say it like that, it sounds even worse, but it is the truth. He writes, how would you advise Marquette if he came to you with this scenario? And that's a good question. Positioning, right? Sometimes you got to put yourself in someone's shoes and sometimes you even got to take yourself out of your own shoes and say, what would I say to me? And that's what Brother P. Dad is advising to you. And I think that's a good point. And I only tell you out of love. I tell you out of love trying to make your life easier. That is wild. Want to acknowledge Alexis. Writes, Peace of the Saints. Thoughts on becoming a freelance copywriter. Um, I've never hired a copywriter. I know they exist and they get paid. I, I have to admit that I'm rarely thinking about that which is average. Uh, when I think, I'm always trying to think in like how you can become enormous. And I don't think that copywriting is a field that has high upside. For example, if you were to say, Marquette, what do you think of designing cell phone cases? I'd say, mm, I don't think much of it, but if you get really good at it, you can sell, a, you can sell millions of them and become a millionaire. There's a lot of products. There can be a lot of up, upside. I don't know of any copywriters who are millionaires from doing that job. There are jobs where you can do it and make six figures or a million bucks. Um, I don't know any wealthy copywriters. I don't find that to be exciting. But if you find that to be exciting, carry on. Um, I don't know that to be a hot field. I certainly don't find that to be a field of the future. Um, so I'm not excited about it. Uh, if you want to talk more about that in particular or about your career trajectory or where you're at, you can book a consultation at marquetism.com. I advise you to do so because there are times where information, especially from someone who's experienced, can impact the whole rest of your life. I got information when I was a young man uh, from a gentleman who was a partner at a law firm, a millionaire, and he was an attorney. He was the top dog at a big law firm, and he told me not to become a lawyer. I got information from a law professor after I just uh, finished being accepted to great law schools, and she said, don't go to law school. And those pieces of information from experts, I happen to be lucky enough to get those pieces of information for free. But right now, if you said, Marquette, if you could go back in time and you didn't have access to those people and you had to pay for that information, what would you pay for it? I would pay whatever money I had, I would pay it. What if I had in a bank account? I would pay it. Why? Because if I would have went and became a lawyer, I would be earning at most, if I was an average lawyer, you know, quarter of a million. Uh, if I was a great lawyer, a partner might get up to a million and I'd have to work hard for it. And that is not a lifestyle that I admire. So to get those pieces of information, which changed my entire future, is so helpful. So when you can get access to people who know what they're talking about and can help you think through what you want to do, it can impact your life, man. So I want to encourage everybody, whether you talk to me or someone else, pay what it costs. You hear me? Because I am so thankful I'm not a lawyer. Mind you, I'm a man who's hired a ton of lawyers. I know what they do. I know what they get paid. I've hired intellectual property lawyers, criminal lawyers, business lawyers. I've had all kinds of lawyers international business lawyers, lawyers in Korea, lawyers in Puerto Rico. I've hired a lot of lawyers. I know what they get paid. And I know the work that they got to do. And I know the level of respect they get. Yeah, they get respect. But what's the difference in respect you get saying I'm a lawyer and then being a CEO when you're making, the lawyer might make a million bucks if they're their partner. A CEO is making an infinite amount of money. A lawyer is capping out at a million and very few of them get to a million. So that changed my life, that advice. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying.
And I just want to be emphatic about that because I don't want you to look back in five years or 10 years and say, damn, I could have been. That's the worst thing I could have been. You know, in my case, I could have been a lawyer and I thank God I didn't become one. And here's the thing. If I've been a lawyer, I would have been one of the best. You heard me? My name would have been legendary as a lawyer because can't nobody talk it like I talk it. But here's the thing. As the greatest lawyer, I would have capped out at a million bucks, which is peanuts compared to what I can do as a businessman. Uh, shout out to, uh, oh, I think I shout out Craig already came through on Cash App. My apologies. Carrying on. Here's a very important thing with regards to women in relationships. A lot of guys meet a female and they think that they're about to run her program off the rip. That's not the case. Often when you meet a female, you have to build rapport. And this is the case of any relationship. But for some reason with romantic relationships, males tend to think that the female is going to submit to their leadership straight away without her having a strong sense of who he is or his quality of leadership or strength of character. So you have to understand that when you meet a female, you're not going to run her world straight away. The woman does need to be coachable, but she probably will not be open to coaching early on. But as you progress with her time wise and in terms of the depth of your connection, she should increasingly become more coachable. And this is one of the rules for females that I need to write down, which is submit. Increase your submission day by day. Until you are fully submitted. And the reason that's so important is because men don't want to deal with unruly women. And the funny thing is I've even had a female that was very attracted and very interested in me. In fact, she might even be watching this right now because I curbed her, super curbed her. Because every time there was a chance for her to submit, she didn't submit. She always had an excuse and an explanation, but that only goes so long and so far. I'm not going to put up with it for any significant amount of time. And her problem was she doesn't know how to submit. And if you don't know how to submit as a female, what you really are suggesting is that you don't know how to be a woman. You fundamentally do not even know how to be a woman. And sadly, a female should not necessarily have to be trained on how to be a woman. That should be largely inherent. But how to have a good relationship, well, that's something you might need to be trained on. And that's why we have these rules for females. We have rules and uh, recommendations for men as well. But for the women, you need to increase that submission day by day. Same time, I'm going to go ahead and give you a, a little bit of time to send in your last thoughts, questions, comments. And then I will go ahead and uh, wrap up. I also want to acknowledge uh, Khalif, who actually went ahead and copped uh, Mitchell's sunglasses. He actually got them in white. So he got the Sassin sunglasses in white. If you're wondering where you can get those, you can get those at T-H-E-S-A-S-N.com. Well, Saints, it's been truly a pleasure to be here fellowshipping with you all, especially for this uh, significant amount of time. Let us end this the way we always end this, with the creed of the assassin. Repeat after me with full conviction, knowing this is true of you. The creed of the assassin. I am going to be who I truly am because I am remarkable. And I'm going to strive every moment to show the greatest part of who I am. Until next time. <laughs> Shout out to Ban Rights. Here's for your Colgate toothbrush, indeed. Thank you. <laughs>